Yo, yo, yo. Welcome. Soccer over there. Uh, allegedly, Nick Alifi will be joining us, and uh, maybe less allegedly, Jared Smith might be joining us to talk a little bit of soccer over there, and probably some down here, and probably some over around the corner as well. We start, John, with Watford has a new manager, and uh, it is not a surprise when you get into Watford's history of the retread model. And this particular retread is Roy Hodgson, new manager, set to uh, take hold. It is done. And so after the average of 25 matches, you're looking at a new manager. This one's a little ahead of the curve with Claudio Ranieri, only winning three times or winning or drawing three times in the 14 matches, I want to say, that he was there taking over. Uh, for a manager in October, the Pozzo family now on their third manager of the year, Roy Hodgson, out of a job since Crystal Palace at the end of last season. So 74 years young, your new caretaker manager, your new manager at uh, Watford. Um, why are you mentioning his age? Do you remember who the last manager was? Yeah, a 70-year-old Claudio Ranieri. Yes. So I don't think that's anything to do with the uh, job. Uh request any of those things the characteristics you're looking for in a manager how oh, you went a couple years up um it's not good for Watford and what they've done for a long time this is not new for them when Claudio Ranieri was hired uh, we talked about why do you want to take this job right now because you know you're not gonna last very long um you know it's not exactly a shock that Claudio Ranieri didn't make it past 13 games uh maybe thought he might get a little bit further but it's Watford uh Jim Proudfoot one of the the commentators uh, for the Premier League had ahead of his last game Ranieri's last game um the average lifespan of a Watford manager was 29 games over the last 10 years well now with Ranieri being a previous Watford manager it is down to 25 league games as the average lifespan of a Watford manager so, yeah. Um, how successful, by the way, has Watford been over the last 10 years? They've been a, uh, what do we call them? A, a pogo, a back and forth. I mean, we, we call them a pogo. A pogo stick. Or no, what is we, we call them a pogo stick. What's the, what is it going? It's the, the back and forth version. All right, hold on. Let's see if Nick Alifi has the answer to this. Uh, Nick, what, what's the yo-yo? answer? Thank you, Nick Alifi. Thank you, Nick. Pogo. Yeah. Yo, yo, not a pogo. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I, I, you showed up at the right time, Nick. Um, so. Ranieri gets fired. Uh, again, not a shock. Um, maybe a little bit earlier than we would have expected. But we, we saw this coming before he was hired. Uh, Watford going to Watford. I don't, I don't know what else to say about it. It's, it's, just, it's the methodology of mid-table clubs and lower-tier clubs that you know, ownership says we want a project. We want something we can believe in and build, and we can. Da, da, da. No, 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 no. We're not going to do that anymore. Sorry, uh, we don't know what happened. Uh, uh, scrap everything. Blow everything up. Sorry, I'm getting caught up on the the Twitch pitch and the uh, yelling about yo-yos is, is quite entertaining. Uh, yeah, you know, Twitch pitch. Uh, you know. Hey, hey. Come, come, collect your man. Can can we get a, a Watford versus Genoa like managerial derby? Because neither one will like have anybody last for more than a couple of months. No, it'll be it'll be like the you know the the ownership's cousin's nephew who co- ends up taking over the team, and you know for this star-studded derby that's going to be just absolutely nuts. Can they just start swapping managers? That'd sure. make it a lot easier, wouldn't it? It would be. It would be. just you know. Just hey, five. we're done with this guy. He, he goes over there. Like, yeah, like the tag, tag team. Yeah, just yeah. run over like. You know, if Genoa starts, you know, like loses seven games in a row and you have like the dramatic reach for the corner, like, ah, you know, the Wofford manager, come on, come on, come on, come on, reach, come on. No, you know, you have, you have the dramatic moment. But look, this is what happens. They have a project. They lose a couple of games. Oh, my God. Red alert. Shields mm-hmm. up. Fired mm-hmm. a manager. And then they fi- they hired these, these retreads and these also rans. And then what? It's a cycle, right? The only way to get out of the cycle is to commit to a process. And none of these teams want to commit to a process. And 
that's why you are where you are. If you want to, you know, there are some mid table teams that, you know, either found a ton of money and committed to a process of spending money and got their way up to the top, or they committed to a process and worked their way up into the higher levels of the prem. But the ones who churn and burn are the ones who are perpetually stuck in the relegation zone. They're the ones who are perpetually finding some new manager. We wish so-and-so the the best in their future endeavors. And it's on you. It's your fault. You can't blame the economics of the world on that one. You can't blame anyone else except you. That's a you problem. So, you know, Watford and, you know, everyone else who hires the Steve Bruce's of the world, and uh, in this case, the Roy Hodgson's of the world, and Everyone else who, you know, wants to go and play caveman football for a while, have fun. And then, you know, the big Sam is just waiting for that, that next three-game skid. He's we waiting. haven't heard anything in a long time about Sam Allardyce. Mm-mm. I am I mean, I don't I don't know why. Like, I don't know if he's just chilling or he's what, chilling. but I haven't he, heard he's his he's name in a long group. time. Yeah. He's just chilling. But that's – but it the the issue with this – and we talk about management all the time. You know, who is this big club going to get? There's no great big names. Well, it's that's because there's a ton of growth that is being stifled with these lower level teams because they these young promising managers get promise and that and then Claudio is certainly not a young and promising manager, but but it happens where these young managers get these jobs and then get flushed out. And there's no learning curve. There's no time for process. There's no room for mistakes. And with that, they end up getting stuck in the cycle as well. So there's a ton of cycles that need to be broken here. The number one is that if you get a project, commit to it. You know, commit to it. But, you know, Claudio's a class guy. Mm -hmm. Everywhere he's been, everyone has said that he's amazing, that that he's beloved. And, you you know, I, I... but this one made no sense from the beginning. Like, no. why Why are you taking it if you're Claudio? Right. Because you know you're not going to be there very long. You know, right. the history, like, mm-hmm. you know, like, why do it? And, I mean, uh, Dawn Star says, should Frank Lampard go for the Watford job? Hell no. no. Mm. He should no. run in the other direction. Like, Frank Lampard is one of these guys, whatever you think about him and his, you know, it, I think he's got a. Managers. I think he's got a future. I right. think he's he, got a good future. I'd like to see where he ends up next. Right, but his agent needs to do a good job of steering him away from open jobs and steering him toward good jobs. Yes. And in Claudio's case, look, Claudio needs to go back to Italy. He needs to call up Parma and be like, "Let's get this thing back to Serie A where it belongs," yeah. and get a reclamation project. And for his swan song, get one of these clubs back to the top where they need to yeah. be. And that, to me, is, is the next job for Claude Arenieri. As far as Frank Lampard goes, no. he. I don't think any promising manager that has a remote future needs to go near this job. And I think the same thing. I don't care who is paying the bills at, at Newcastle. I put them in the same category as well. I, look, mm. I, get, I get it. You that's wanted, a different one. I, that's fine. We can disagree on it, but I don't see anything happening with these clubs. And 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 Fulham is another one for me. Shad Khan has more than enough money to do anything he wants, and yet this club perpetually, perpetually, like, come on, come on, uh, the Cottagers, why can't the Cottagers get it right? Uh, why? They they have more than enough money to get it done. They keep There's, making stupid decisions. Yeah, but that's a diff- that's different to me. Like like teams that are poorly run or make bad decisions with some leadership. Yeah, no, I I understand right. what you're saying in terms of steering a client away from that. I get that. Mm-hmm. But if I'm looking at okay, my client needs to work. The the severance package at his last place is done. Um, I got to get my guy some jobs and it's between a Newcastle or Fulham and a Watford. It's not even close. It's stay away from Watford because they have a long history of churn and burn. The other teams have histories of being poorly run and you can maybe, maybe make actually change that process or at least believe you're going to change that process in going in somewhere with some resources and less of a negative history, just a different kind of bad history. You know what I mean? Like, 
I understand. There's me, promise of potential there. Watford, there's yeah. no promise of nothing. Yeah, I, I, but, I, but we've seen the best organizations on earth get absolutely wrecked by poor leadership. Even if you have the absolutely. ability with to have fundamental, like uh, uh, amazing infrastructure and all these other fantastic things, but you don't have a clue what you're doing. I mean, I, and I'll look I'll, for any of us, who, uh, anybody who's watching from overseas. We're, I'm going to use an NFL example with the Washington football team. Right, that they Dan Snyder has more money than he does sense, and the fact that he has all the infrastructure in the world, he has all the money uh, to to do whatever he wants with that organization, and yet they fall apart every year because of meddling, because of idiotic mm-hmm. decision making, and that's the one common thread, money apart between these teams that all these promising managers need to stay away from. And Newcastle, for me, yes, I'll agree, is a bit different because they're trying to undo a lot of pedestrian ownership, pedestrian meddling, pedestrian mentality, and they have to undo that. And because it's going to take some time to get it done, that's fine. Yeah, less negative history. I, oh, I agree. Yeah, but show but me something. at least there's new people making those decisions there. You know, I, I can't right, really right, take. Right. The previous years of mistakes into consideration there i i can definitely be persuaded into taking that one you know it's tough if you're a manager who's trying to break through into the yeah. the big leagues you know you're not gonna get the manchester city and liverpool and chelsea jobs you're gonna have yeah. to get one of these and make more of it but watford you should never take no, <laughs> like no, watford no, is, God, no. watford stay away from i can you can go to fulham with some resources and win and get out when the time, when the getting's good, get out when you've done something and you're on the rise and you feel like, yeah, the leadership here, eh, yeah, I'm not going to get the support to the next level. In the championship, you get them promoted. Then you go to your next. Yeah. You, you can, you can swing that and make it work, but Watford, no, you're just, you're, you're yeah. stuck. It, it's going to, you're not going to last the season. It's going to end up being a, a bad spot on your resume. It's going to be one of those jobs that, you know, we all leave off of our resume. Like, it just didn't go well. <laughs> Everybody and, has that one. You yeah. know, we skip that one. Wait a second. Where were you in this seven-month period of time? There's this gap in your I resume. was finding myself. I was, you know, I, I was thinking about what I wanted to do next. I, I was Creative consulting ideas. with some people. You know. You know. You know. But look, I, I, I think Jenna was a prime example of this with, with Shevchenko. And, and yeah. he was somebody who... Um, you know, he did some things with Ukraine. He had, he had, you know, clear ideas of what he wanted to do. He had a clear lineage, which to me is very important. Yeah. That if you have a clear philosophical lineage that you're drawing from, right, that you could say, all right, this is what I want to do. This is how I want to do it. This is, the, this is the basis of my ideas. And General was a disastrous situation to start with. And they brought in Shevchenko and said, right, have fun. Then, mate, no, you're out. You're gone. Yeah. Before he even had time and to, to implement damn near anything he wanted to do. I mean, they didn't even give the man a full train. They didn't even give him the, a full transfer window to bring anyone in. And you're firing your guy. That tells me you don't have a remote clue as to what you're doing. And yeah. and so Genoa, to me, is one of those clubs that – like Salernitana is different because they had ownership change. Yeah, and they, different and, situation. Yeah, different situation entirely. Genoa is a disaster zone. They are like the Serie A version of Watford where you have, it's just, you know, we're just going to throw, you know, assorted random monkey poop at the wall and see what sticks. There's no clear indication that they have an idea of what they want. It's just get points. Okay, great. Are you going to get me players capable of getting that? No. Um, am I going to have the time to implement a philosophy? No. What's the selling point here? <laughs> you know, you get paid, you, you get, get a check. Uh, yeah, well, well we have a fantastic it. unlimited PTO package for you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you the, the, the the club cafeteria is very good. It gets good reviews. Right. Like I got nothing. Look, you know, the, um, the, the pesto at the at the Genoa. Uh, it's wonderful you know, coaches lounge. I'm sure is amazing, but wonderful. Uh, Dawn star with a question. Um, and I'm going to extend it just a little bit. It says what's a better job, Norwich or Watford? 
Uh, Norwich for me, it's an easy answer because, uh, I mean, Norwich doesn't have a lot of resources, but at least I think you're going to get a fair shake to try yeah. to make the best of it. Right. I don't think Watford you will. I, I think Watford's the worst job in the Premier League currently, and I don't think they'll be in the Premier League next year. So I then you start. Had, to... they, now they've had a couple of times where they've kind of made some a stupid choice or two, but they've made some. I mean, I think every every club's had that, but Norwich has stuck with people who have had who have done okay. Like yeah. they haven't just run people right. in in a couple of months. Like they've actually give, given people an opportunity. I, mean, I think when you go further down, if you're, you know, new manager on the block and you need work and you're considering what you're going to get and you start looking below the Premier League, because I think Watford's the worst job there. If you just want to have Premier League on your resume, well, OK, take the Watford job. You'll be there for, you know, three, four months and you'll be gone. Yeah. The championship, you know, we've talked about Fulham. I think it's a better job than Watford. Mm-hmm. Um you know, at the top of the, the championship right now, beyond Fulham, it's Blackburn, it's Bournemouth, it's QPR, it's West Brom, it's Huddersfield, Middlesbrough, Nottingham Forest, Stoke. I mean, maybe when you get down to Coventry, and, and it's some of the, the issues that they have had over the last few years, that I'm trying to find one that would give me more pause than Watford. You know, John, I mean, any of the, those others, I mean, these are in the championship for a reason, yeah, yeah. but they feel a little more stable. You get to Coventry and then, yeah, I might have some concerns about taking that one. Yeah. If you got Coventry, I mean, Blackburn has turned it around because if, if people remember when they were uh, in their last season in the premier league, they're owned by uh, the family that runs Vinky's chicken. And actually someone, someone had smuggled a live rooster into a Blackburn match late in the season when they knew they were going to get relegated. Fans were so fed up with the Venkies ownership that they smuggled the rooster into the match and released it out onto the field. That's yeah, how, I don't want to work there. That's how fed up they were when they were being relegated. The family still owns it. They've turned it around okay. to right now where they are second in the table. But, you know, I, because of that history, you know, I'm kind of leery about Blackburn. I, but I think that you're in that Coventry. Blackpool has had a history. Hold hold on, hold on. If I get the job at Blackburn, are they going to give me, like, the Vinky's Chicken Gold Guard? Probably, yes. Do I get to, to go get all the, the chicken I, I want that on a regular be, basis? That would be my guess, yes. That might make it better than Watford. Yeah. At least I'm going to get fed. Yeah. Uh, Blackpool has had issues with their ownership group, and it looks like they're at least now back to being mid-table in the championship. Yeah, then you're getting you're then getting you're down it. into yeah. your other ideas. But the one thing that you you know you look at the top half of the table in the championship, you look at a lot of teams that did spend at least a cup of coffee in in the the Premier League. So they're trying to figure out ways to get back to the Premier League there. Yeah, I mean, when you, you're getting into like Coventry and Derby and and clubs like that, that well, you're you're a little bit worried about the the checks maybe showing up on time. Right. Yeah, to see, to get past Watford. I'm picking. I'm going to, and I'm picking Monza. Uh, Silvio Berlusconi owns the yeah. team. Yeah, yeah, you got resources behind it, right? You got resources ready to go. The guy wants to win. It's probably one of the best chances to make Syria in a reasonable amount of time. Uh, Everyone else, like uh, Lecce, Benevento, Brescia, uh, Pisa, you're, I mean, again, you're running into some check situations there. You know, you're running into stability issues. But to me, Monza, if you want a reclamation project, it's going to be Parma. And I would wait for Salonatana to drop and take over that operation because they're going to be looking for stability, new ownership there. Maybe a little bit of time, uh, and and maybe Spall. Believe it or not, Joe Tacopina, mm. the guy who yeah. owned Venezia, who really saw that brand overhaul, he now owns Spall in Serie B, and so he's somebody who you know you're going to get resources put behind it. You know there's going to be a brand yeah. overhaul, and you will be made a face of that, and you're going to have your image put out there, your your own individual brand put out there as well. So. I mean, that's half the battle. Look, man. You know, Looking for the growth uh, property. Uh, yeah. News! We have maybe big news. Maybe. In okay. in certain parts of the world, this is becoming big news. Uh, you know, we're going into World Cup qualifiers this week. 
And Argentina's already clinched, so they did not call Lionel Messi. Mm-hmm. He is in Europe, but he's yeah. not hanging around in Paris. No. He's been seen at dinner, okay. hanging out Where? with Sergio Busquets and Xavi. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right. Oh. I'm sure people are going to run with this in very, uh, you know, normal – Hush tones. Easy ways of not overreacting to this uh, dinner. What was on the dinner menu? Oh, boy. They're, they're, people are going to be freaking out in Barcelona. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Absolutely freaking what out. because El Chiringuito is going to do when they find the pictures and the stills and the video? I mean, they're out there. I'm sure El Chiringuito has probably been yelling about it for an hour now. This is, I mean, it, it, is, it was a late dinner in Barcelona. So I'm, I'm sure El Chiringuito has been running with it for a while. Because, I mean, look, the, the storyline has, has been consistently that, you know, he's not happy in Paris and he doesn't really like it there and he didn't want to leave Barcelona anyway, which I actually believe that part's true. Yeah. And now Xavi's back and, well, you know, maybe he could be convinced. Um, I, who knows at this point? I, I don't know what kind of deal he's got in Paris. I don't know what kind of out clauses he has. You know they're there. You, you yeah. know that he wasn't committed for five years in Paris. You know if he wants to walk, he could press a button and walk. But uh, yeah, he, he's having dinner with Xavi and Busquets during the international break. And I, I'm sure there are very uh, measured reactions in Barcelona to this. Oh, well, Look, at Messi, Messi is not a man. Messi's a brand. Yes. And so nice. Messi brand has to I mean, how often are we hearing Messi's name now in the larger major media? I have I mean, not heard it that much. Eh. Not nearly as much as when he was at Barcelona. Yeah, some of it's because he he hasn't played as much. That, that part's right. true. I mean, we haven't seen that you know right. as much on the on the field, and you know. But you, you need to go where it, it, one there's a a legacy with obviously with him in Barcelona that needs yeah. to be, I think, finished. Yeah, and yeah. It wasn't finished the way it ended it, it wasn't so far. Finished, no, and if there's a way to make that happen, I'm sure Messi's going to look at a way to be a part of that. Xavi did not want to answer when asked about Messi. <laughs> no, I don't blame him. <laughs> yeah, he, he's like, yeah, he just keeps on walking. He just right. keeps on walking. Wants no part of it. Didn't hear you. One thing that would be very interesting is that if Messi pulls some kind of uh, Messi's people, I'm sure have inserted, as you said, uh, loopholes. And, oh, you uh, know, There's a ripcord in doctrines. there somewhere. Right. If there is a, if he pulls that, I wonder how strictly Barcelona's finances get looked at considering that, uh, who knows? Individuals, uh, who kind of oversee that for UEFA. Eh. So, the UEFA part, I mean, I I'm, that part I'm not too worried about. La Liga, I think, would be trickier because yeah. they've actually like upheld their rules, whereas UEFA, you know, rolls over uh, faster than a dog who's learned the trick. So, right. you know, like that part would be a concern. But I also think La Liga would like to have Lionel Messi back oh, and sure, sure. would yeah, yeah. probably find a way to make that work. Um, wh- what kind of what what kind of food do you think they had? Oh, I'm good. This is like, I I know what restaurant they went to. Oh, this yeah? is this, this is everywhere. I mean, this is big in Spain right now. I, look, I I don't I'm not well, familiar with. What it. was it the was restaurant? So we can look at the menu. So. Uh, it, it's kind of obvious what kind of food it is from the restaurant name. Oh lord, what's the, I, what's the restaurant name? I don't know. Sushi ninety nine. Uh oh. Okay. Ooh. Sushi ninety nine. Um, uh, Xavi was uh, starting the celebrations for his forty second birthday. Oh. Lord, what would be the? Uh, what, I mean, there's got to be some like high quality, crazy rare stuff, right? Like, probably, probably, yeah, very, very fancy. Like uh, some, I mean, you're probably looking at uh, some blowfish. Uh, you're probably looking at a little bit of uh, like super high end, like grade A double plus tuna. Uh, I mean, this is this is hilarious. So like. They've they've got a video of Messi, you know, leaving the restaurant, walking, and there's at least four or five cameras and about five to ten microphones being shoved in his general direction. You can have that. No, nah, yeah, I don't want no part of that you stuff. You can have that. 
I, I don't think people understand how insane that is to have that kind of that kind of crush around you at any time and how uncomfortable it is. I mean, there's there's no way in the world. No way. Yeah, uh, it's, it's nuts. Okay, I'm looking at the menu right now. You're not going to eat any of it, John. We are no, not. but I'm just. I'm. You wanted to. It's like what? What would they be eating? The no, I was asking what kind of food. Didn't know we knew it was sushi, but go ahead. The grilled toro and smoked Iberian air dried beef tamaki with a chili tomato emulsion and aromatized herbs. That, that sounds expensive. Sounds amazing. <laughs> yeah, that too. Alas Alaskan black cod au gratin with two layers of red miso. What's the cost? Of? Alaskan cod? Uh, let's see. They have gift cards. Uh, I don't You're need a gift the... card. I'm not going to Sushi 99. How much is the meal? They ain't listing no prices. Okay, yeah, that's Ooh. that's a, that's what I, that's the kind of place I thought that's, it was. Yeah. That's that's right, yeah. Yeah, cuz when you go to a place like that, you're not worried about how much each dish costs. Uh-uh. I go, I'm like, all right, what's, what's the cheapest that I can get? Yes, it doesn't so. make me look too cheap. That okay, cool, yeah, I can do that. I, that'll work. I'm good. I'll I'm take good. the gyoza and uh, <laughs> California roll. <laughs> These guys go to a place like, yeah, whatever. We'll 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 have a little bit of everything. Just bring it over. We're Just good. keep it coming. Yeah. Just keep it coming. Actually, there was a uh, Tony Juan Marti of, of Sport uh, does let us down a little bit and says there was no group photo for the nostalgic. No, no group photo it's, it's of the guys dinner, outside. Man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's well, dinner. it's a birthday dinner for no. Xavi. His birthday dinner. This is he's starting his birthday celebrations. He might be one of those people that celebrates like birthday month. Yeah. And it looks like you can get reservations tomorrow night anytime for a table for two from eight thirty to eleven o'clock. They stay open late. Well, John, you, you know that you know that in Spain they eat very late dinners, right? Very late dinner, man. They they, they have like they, they generally take breaks during the day like right. sometimes some people literally take naps during the day yeah, they yeah. go back to work and then they have a late dinner it's a very late two hours man two hours yeah. siesta baby it's yeah, real. very late culture and lunch you can get reservations in barcelona tomorrow anytime from 1 30 to 3 30 looks like tables for two are fairly available we yeah. know how this dinner went how did it go leo dude leo you know it's my birthday right yeah <laughs> you know the best birthday present you can give me I'm gonna make a wish. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna make some phone calls, but I I think you I think you could help me out on my birthday wish here. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, Katie Weaver comes in making fun of Leo's uh, fashion sense. Come on, <laughs> oh, he come can't on. dress, man. No, nah, he man, he's, he doesn't need to worry about style. He's got more important things to worry that, about. He no no. He is one of those guys. He looks like one of those guys who's like, we need to take. Like a part, uh, a coach bag, and we need to stitch it onto the pants leg of my custom jeans. It, and they're yeah. like, Leo, babe, you don't want to do this, man. It's not a good look. No, no, no. You no. don't understand. Let me ask my people. Guys, what do you think? Leo looks great. Oh, my God. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> and so he's like, yeah, why? Okay. That's what happens. You surround yourself with yes people. And, well, and I'm, his I'm wife thinking... is like, oh, my God, he's going yeah. out in that again. I'm thinking maybe Antonella dressed him for this dinner because he he, he looks to be pretty normal. He's wearing like probably fancy jeans, um, a, a jacket because it's probably a little cold. I, I can't tell what kind of shirt he's wearing, but it doesn't look like it's got all kinds of crazy things on it. It, it looks pretty normal. Does I think he have he skulls did okay. on his shirt? No, 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 no. It, the jacket's kind of covering it all, so I can't completely uh, tell, yeah, but yeah. it looks like a normal shirt i don't think it's like a button he's not wearing ed hardy so it's okay no 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 no. He, he's not wearing like affliction gear or anything like right. that right muffin no he's not wearing <laughs> affliction he's, he's okay I, I, again i think Antonella, you know, affliction affliction ed hardy and axe was i think the bane of the italian american existence for about three Oof. years Oof. it was bad it was bad In some time. corners of the united states it's still happening Only oh it still is prevent that fashion disaster it, it still is but yeah it, it was a really bad time there for a while it was ed hardy took over the world and it was very upsetting tattoo like like 30s tattoo tigers with skulls jeez, oh, ridiculous um yeah it, luckily leo was not wearing any of that to dinner i don't know if shavi would have appreciated that he doesn't seem like that kind like, of guy dude, it's my birthday what are you doing wearing that yeah, shavi's like hey, leo look look man I, I saw the pictures of you on your, your vacation like look it, it's my birthday could you please just dress normal can, can, please yeah, can, guys 
Leo, Leo. Please, I have two wishes, Leo. First, I want you to come back and play here next year. Second, please dress like a normal person. Yeah, yeah please. The, te- the text chain beforehand. Yes. Tell Ethanel, you, you, you're not doing the. the d- d- no. d- just tell Anto to pick it out. Just tell Anto to pick it out and, and just wear what she tells you to. Yeah, you're good. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. Um, okay, so that's going to be a story for sure here at some point. Um, let's see. Hold on. I think we might have more details. Um, oh, the director of, of uh, Marco, the uh, daily, one of the daily papers in Spain, was there. Um, Jordi Alba was there. Ooh. It's a private dinner between friends planned for a long time. No more conclusions to be drawn. Yeah. And they were there to celebrate Xavi's birthday. Because it is now Xavi's birthday in Spain. Yes. Wow. So you know, all his dreams come true. That's where it is. Um, and I'm sure, like, I mean, Messi, you know, kept his house in, in Barcelona. I think he, he oh, said yeah, yeah, he would yeah, go yeah. back. So, you know, it's not crazy that he is spending time in Barcelona during a break where he's not going to play for Argentina. I'm so. saying. He's going he's gonna to arrive home, and there's going to be some people like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That yep. doesn't smell like your cologne, Leo. <laughs> oh, what? what? That smells what, what, like something what? from Barcelona, Leo. Oh, you're taking us a whole different way. That, that, what are you thinking? Neymar's going to do that, or Kylian Mbappe, <laughs> or Leonardo? Leonardo, <laughs> <laughs> Leo. Oh, um, where have you been? You have yes. not answered any of my 474 texts, Leo. Oh, uh huh. Yeah, that would be him. <laughs> All right. Speaking of uh, what's that on your folks? Jill. Uh, what are you insinuating now, John? Wait a minute. Yeah, what? What? Just leave it alone. Let's leave uh, it. Let's move on. Yeah. Good grief. He always takes it too far. Well, um, like three and a half hours of sleep here, guys. I'm not that quick on the pickup there, John. Be careful. I, I don't know where John was trying to insinuate things. Um, okay. Speaking of, of jilted potential suitors, Arsenal is one of those. Juventus did what Juve does with uh, Dusan Vlahovic. Vlahovic, I've heard it all different ways. Uh, UEFA mm-hmm. actually had it at one point. Their pronunciation was Vlahovic. They could be wrong. It's UEFA. They, they you know, whatever. Um, Arsenal has been trying and trying and trying and reportedly had a deal worked out with Fiorentina, except Vlahovic didn't really want to listen to anything Arsenal had to say. <laughs> oh. uh, Tottenham realized that they weren't going to beat Arsenal out of it, so they dropped out a long time before that. Vlahovic wanted no part of any of them. He was waiting for Juve. And he has chosen Juve, according to reports. Uh, he already has a contract agreement with Juventus. They're trying to get him right now. And at Fiorentina, they now understood that it is going to be impossible to make him change his mind. Whether it's January or June, Blahovic is going to put on the Juve shirt, which he dreamed of as a child, according to Gazeta dello Sport. Uh, Fiorentina allegedly wants their $70 million up front, no delayed payments. Because Arsenal would give them that. Like, that's that's where it gets tricky. Is Arsenal basically was like, yes, whatever, we'll do it. Okay, fine. Right. But this is also – there's a couple of things that are working against Arsenal here. One is Arsenal's diminished brand. It's reality. Yeah, the player wants no part of it. I mean, that's right. the ultimate thing. Like, right. the rest of it doesn't matter. player wants no part of it. But, no, but there's reasons why the player doesn't want a part of it. In Italy, from a tax perspective – it is more beneficial to be an outsider coming into Italy to play from an outsider to come in to manage, which is why Franck right. Ribéry stayed in Italy and went to Salernitana when he could have gone anywhere else because he can make more money yeah. being there. It's, 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 better, it's better business for you to stay in Italy. There has right been now. some talk about that changing, and I don't think it's gotten too far just yet. That ain't changing. They, they, look, Italy talks a big bunch of noise about that. The Italian but, tax man, he, he might want more. Mm. Because the Agnellis, the Elliots, the, you know, whoever's going to be running Inter uh, next year, everyone is going to be chiming in saying, do not change this. Just trust us. Don't mess with it. Because whenever lockdown was in full effect, it was the Syria owner's the money men who were saying we have to open up, we have to be able yeah. to let people back into the stadium. Yeah. This is a non-negotiable. And, uh, and Spodafora, who was the sporting director at the time was worked on and worked on and worked on until he finally started letting people in. Right. There, there's, if you think of it from like an erosion standpoint, they are a mighty torrent coming down the hill, and they can pretty much erode down any sort of bu- uh, bu- uh, 
bureaucracy that may be standing in the way of making things like this or keeping things like this in place. It's what they keep trying to change the citizenship laws in Italy because they're worried about Argentines coming over and people from uh, other uh, nations coming over, but they keep pointing at Americans saying, these clowns keep bringing us money and they keep <laughs> yeah. trying to bring businesses here and with this like second and, and, and tertiary uh, way back citizenship, keep it. And so it's been, it's been staying there as a result. And so, you know, there's a lot of big talk because one, they had elections, I believe, today, uh, and it's easy to throw things out there and get a lot of traction. As much as people throw stuff out here, it gets a little bit of traction. Over there, they throw like a policy or a program out, lots of traction. You get mm-hmm. an immediate flood of votes, and then it all just kind of gets sputtered away. So this is not changing, I don't think, anytime soon. I'd be shocked. If it's- right. I think the bigger thing here is, well, there's a few things at work here. Uh, mm-hmm. the, the Fiorentina curva has already put a banner up outside the stadium in Florence that says, you don't win respect with goals. Vlahovic, uh, I don't speak Italian, but I, I know enough Spanish to see one word here, and I'm not going to repeat it. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I think the other uh, word might be piece of in front of that. Um, yeah, so that's going over well. And it might have gone over differently if he went outside the country. There probably is a lot of hatred when we're if, talking if, about Juve. If but he went anywhere other thing, than Juve. Yeah, it wouldn't be as big of a deal. Right. But I think part of this is, is something that, you know, Newcastle won't have this for a long time until things change. You know, City has probably finally got to this level, but City still got Crazy Bank to be able to work with. Juve doesn't have Crazy Bank to work with. Barcelona, we know they don't have Crazy Bank to work with, but Barcelona and Juve are freaking Barcelona and Juve, and they still have cachet to these guys right. who, even when the finances don't make sense, like he could probably go to Arsenal. Fiorentina would make more money. He would probably make more money. His agent would probably make more money. Now, the tax thing is a, a different variant to it, but let's just talk pure salaries involved right now. He could do all that, but Arsenal is not Juventus. And and if he is a, a player he's been in Serie A for a while, he's still very young, but he's going to want to go to the cachet. Right. And it still has drawing power. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It- and, and it, for Fiorentina, this goes way back. This goes like back to ba- uh, Roberto Baggio and the transfer that almost caused a riot in Florence. Back to, sort of did. <laughs> uh, and then you look again with uh, with Chiesa, that transfer, and now this. It's, you know, again, it's Juve poaching from uh, Serie A teams that need these deals done. And, you know, they can still pull it off. So, I mean... Yeah, I mean, it's there. a smart business move by them. Right. Yeah. It's, it's you know. Well, maybe. I mean, it should be. But it should be. You know, sure. Juve is not exactly in great financial shape. No. Looking, I guess, at more distressed assets to try to bring in talent is what I was. What? Look at look at those look at those in worse shape than you to try to help yourself out. From a financial perspective, well, this is. This kid's legit. Like it's this. This oh, yeah. is. Beyond Holland, he's probably the next young, like under twenty three forward to go get. He's probably number two. Right. Uh, J- did Jason go robot on us, John? I uh, no, I shouldn't be. I shouldn't be a robot. Damn it. Well, folks, folks were saying uh, on the the Twitch pitch, uh, Captain Ragamuffin says, "Well, can you gonna- hear me?" Keep it. Yeah. But you're, it and breaks but up I, though. It, it breaks up, and it looks like you're talking to me from like, uh, like you're reporting from central Afghanistan right now. Yeah, it's weird. It doesn't make any sense to me because you guys look perfectly clear, and I look clear to myself. Oh, mm. Well, mm. we're just pointing out what the what the facts on the ground are, sir. Well, there's nothing else I can really do about it. I don't have any <laughs> aluminum foil to put on the freaking antenna. Well, you should. I don't have it. You can drive some over if you want. It's not really how the show would work, John. <laughs> <laughs> but it, look, it, it, 
But poor, poor Fiorentina, man. They, look, they're they're seventh in the table right now. They Italiano has those guys playing pretty well, especially considering where they were. Um, you know, and Rocco Camiso has come out recently and just waylaid the the the, the guys at the top and on how they are, you know not very transparent with their debt and their spending and uh, their, their pretty much their financial management and how he's wide open and completely transparent. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, all I want is a new stadium. Damn it. And he, you know, I can't even get that, but we're completely transparent. And so, you know, it, this has to be very frustrating for them. You know, I, I'm sure as long as the check clears, Rocco is going to be happy. But at the end of the day for the supporters, Keep getting raided by Juve is just unbelievably frustrating, and there's it's it it's one of the most lopsided yet fever pitched rivalries in Syria. So there is absolutely zero love lost between. Just so like Yankees Red Sox. It, no, because, no, no, no. It, it, that would be early. Early Yankees Red Sox. No, no, Mm-mm. no, no. This would be like uh, this would be like Yankees and uh... it's like Georgia South Carolina. Yeah, I'll give you that. I'll give you Georgia I mean, because South there, Carolina. there's a there's a definite like level difference. That's why it's the right. Yankees Red Sox. Okay. And, and even when the Red Sox weren't great, it, they still had the cachet of that. Fiorentina doesn't have that same cachet as Juventus. Yeah, I, I would say like Yankees Rays in the early days. Would yeah, be, would be because like the Yankees essentially like, well, their uh, their spring training facilities right next to Raymond James Stadium in Tampa. Right, right. And there's more Yankee right fans the down state. there. Yeah. Well, yeah, even, because I mean they used to be at, uh, they used to be in Tampa forever. Yeah, you know they they were there forever. I mean there's there's been Yankee fans you know in that area way before the Rays existed. Right. And so it's it's very frustrating for fans of the actual Devil Rays to, yeah. back then, right, as they were known, uh, to deal with the Yankees. And you were, you didn't have even remotely close to the same spending level, but, you know, the Yankees would just come through and poach not only your fans, but to the players as well. So mm-hmm. Yeah, that would be about the, the closest proximity. Yeah, Georgia-South Carolina is a good shout. Um but it's it's very frustrating. It's very frustrating for you know. Good for them. Good for Juve though. They keep finding money. It's a magical mystery tour where that money comes from. But they keep finding it, baby. So, like Barcelona, except more money to work with than Barcelona does. It, there's a family of companies surrounding yeah. Juve that uh, you can move uh, accounts around a little bit easier. Yeah. Little consolidation here and there, you know. You know, it, it, it's it, but it's, again, it's the way that it's been set up for a while now. With uh, you know, with uh, with with the family that it's not just the Agnellis, you know. So it's it you know, when you when you look at um, you know, like Jeep, they own Jeep, they own uh, Good Lord, they they still own Caterpillar. Yeah. I mean, they, Probably. They, there's a lot of companies under that umbrella that they own, and so. All right. uh, I need I need an Italian uh, punditry lesson from you, Nick. Oh Lord. Uh, who is who is Matri? One of the football pundits in Italy. Matri, he used to be a player. He was a player okay. in, in Syria. Okay. I guess he's. Some people don't like his work as a pundit, and some people do. Okay. So uh, now we have updates on Daniele De Rossi. Okay. Daniele De Rossi was in Tampa yesterday for the Buccaneers Rams game. He is in so much love with American football. He offered DeZone his services as a pitch side reporter for American football. Mm-hmm. He, uh, on Instagram yesterday, uh, he shared three different stories on his official account. In one of them, he wrote, I love you, American football. Well, in another, he said, Dear DeZone, I offer my services as a pitch reporter for the Super Bowl. He says, especially because if you let Matri be a football pundit every Sunday, I can easily talk about American football. I like Daniele De Rossi. I will, I, okay, so I used to work for the Buccaneers the season before they went to their first Super Bowl. 
Yeah, the season before and the season they actually went. Oh, the Gruden the, before the, Gruden, the Gruden Gannon. Yeah, this is the Gruden. This is the Gruden. So the last year Tony Dungy, first year Gruden. Okay. And that experience on the on the floor, of Raymond James, it, it is it is very unique. The the energy from the crowd is absolutely was back then was absolutely bug nuts. Um, it was it was very Florida man. <laughs> very. We were walking through the parking lot and. Um, and you know we were in our official team gear, and people were just like bombing us with like Jello shots and like I, we're like we can't we're in, we are in team uniform. No, I can't. I can't. And like this was like we were at the stadium at like nine a.m. for like a one o'clock game, and they're already nine and a half sheets to the wind. I'm and shocked. So, and so by no, the time right. the game rolls around, I mean the crowd was just absolutely nuclear and you know you have the cannons going off and fire the cannons oh which is is a lot louder than people i think realize Uh they are yeah okay yeah so it's it's an amazing experience and uh you know look the the first box has got some pretty good food happening up there so at least they did back then it's been a long time since i've been up there but uh it, it look it's it was a lot of fun. So Daniele De Rossi as a sideline reporter for the Italian coverage of the Super Bowl. Yay or nay? Book it. Yay. Absolutely. It. I'm absolutely. Look, he's, he's, the, the, he's like the toughest guy. He's the toughest guy in uh, in, in recent Syria. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's like a, one of the toughest dudes going. So, yeah, he's if anyone is going to commentate outside of like a rugby player, um, then – I would say, yeah. Absolutely. Could you imagine him at Media Day? That would be amazing. I mean, yeah, what do you think amazing. he's going to do, John? Well, no, just you go into all the scrums <laughs> and you're asking the questions. For a guy who's being unleashed on the Super Bowl, who's such a fan of American football, give him Super Bowl Media Day to have that experience. I mean, just diving in and asking offensive linemen questions and linebackers and all this kind of stuff. Give him Media Day. I think that'd be awesome. I don't, I don't know how crazy it would be. I mean, generally the story in media day is, uh, oh, who's the reporter they send from um, TV Azteca in Mexico? Ines Sanz, I think. Yeah, Ines Sanz, Sanz, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's usually what everybody wants to talk about after media day, unless somebody says something reckless. So I, I don't think they're going to pay any attention to Daniela De Rossi, sadly. But he probably would enjoy talking to the linemen. He, he'd probably want to talk to some guys that maybe – Everybody else wouldn't, so that might work. Yeah, um, kicker, the punter, the lineman, that kind of stuff. So, are you able to slide tackle the man who is uh, kicking the ball? Can you slide the tackle with his studs up? Is this a tackle or is this legal? Uh, the, the flag? No, the, Danielle, you can't, you can't do that. It's a flag. It's a penalty. They would get the ball. What if I do flying, a uh, flying slide tackle into him and break his leg in two? Can we? No, no, no. We can't. No, we can't do that. What if I throw the elbow in his nose and bust it open? Well, I, I am trying to slap the ball and I elbow him in the face repeatedly. Can I? <laughs> sure, you could do that. That's, that's yeah. fine. Uh, you might be able to get away with that one. That Brian that's, that's pretty unique there, bro. Life. What's your name there? <laughs> Why'd you come Brian, to the club? I'd... Just feeling pain in his nose for some reason this evening. What? 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 What am I having flashbacks? Got, still, mm-hmm. That still happened. Mm-hmm. It did. It did. And, but the only Styles. team who they didn't beat, only one team in that World Cup they didn't beat. Yep. Styles Nine man United States. Styles make fights, and the United States was perfectly built to take on that team. It was the only and good game almost, the U.S. played in that thing. They finished ten v nine. It's ridiculous. Um, all right, one more on uh, my board before we hit some some random stuff. Uh, we've had this conversation about does Manchester United have any idea of what they've gotten themselves into? And when I hear reports like this one from David Ornstein, I, I feel reinforced that they don't know what they're doing. They're going to step up their search for a new manager. Okay, this is it gets back to the weirdness of appointing a guy who has a system and a style of play that takes time to implement. But you give him six months, and he's going to be a consultant. So now you're stepping up your search for a new manager. Pochettino, Ten Hag, Luis Enrique, and Julian Lopetegui will all be considered. 
Like it's like all over the map of stuff, and the only one who is in the ballpark of Ralph Rangnick, who is is not just going in and, and filling out a lineup sheet and guys playing, like he's trying to have them play the way he wants them to play. The only one who's even remotely in that ballpark is Ten Hag. And he's not really that close. Like, what? They're just flailing around at this they, point. Well, that sounds – look, they have – they brought in who probably told them, I don't care who you have on the team right now. It's going to take time to flush out some of the bad contracts, some of the older players. I can do that. That's not a problem. And I will be a consultant for you. And, you know, I, I can help you look for the next manager. That's fine. But I don't essentially care who you have. And any of the transfer requests I have are probably going to be sub $30 million. You know, It looks like they are uh, sending Martial to Sevilla. That is reported as done from Fabrizio Romano. On loan, uh, Sevilla is going to pay salary for the rest of this season. Yeah. Um, look, they, they went back to back. They're in fourth. Um, they have fourth place talent. I mean, I think they should be fourth. I don't think they'll go any higher than that because they're not in the same class as City, Liverpool, and Chelsea. If, if Rangnick gets them fourth, then you get into a really weird situation. You know, if you keep them. No, but, I, but if you're talking now about going to get one of these other guys, and one of the reasons you're talking about doing it is right. you want somebody with experience of working in a major European team. Mm -hmm. But you appointed... Rangnick, and you've given him some level of say, mm -hmm. and he's going to be able to make a case of, hey, it was here. We finished fourth. Um, you should stick with me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then it gets really awkward for the board, who I really don't think had some grand plan. I think they literally were like, we're 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 stuck. Um, yeah. Okay. He's got a. It, it, at least he's got a plan. Cool. Let's do it. That PowerPoint was brilliant. Whatever. And they're going to get backed into a weird spot here because Pochettino, Luis Enrique. Uh, Luis Enrique, I, I'll be fair. He's a little closer in some of the aspects of, of Rangnick. But the biggest difference is all these guys want the ball. Rangnick doesn't. He wants to, to work without the ball. Pochettino feels like completely different than this. Like it's just this is your list. I mean, if this is actually the list, and David Ormstein's a great reporter with the Athletic, he's mm -hmm. generally pretty on point with stuff. Right. If this is your list, first off, you don't have a, a common thread of a philosophy if that's your list, because those guys don't have much in common. Right. To then have that list with Rangnick as your interim, then consultant of something afterwards for two years. None of it fits. Yeah, It just feels like they made a move and now still don't know what they're dealing with. <laughs> no, they, it, they, I think, I, I, I think that they had a moment of clarity, despite what anybody on this panel may think, <laughs> uh, when they signed Rognick, because they understood that they had contracts with players who were underperforming their contract value. They had players who, you know, at some point were going to start dictating management situations, and you don't want that because no. you're not good enough to do it. And you need to clean house. And he's a man who's capable of cleaning house. Sure. And he can keep you competitive in doing so. Yes, I know he has not managed a Liverpool or a Barcelona or a Bayern Munich, but the people who he's handpicked for management positions have moved on to do some pretty impressive things. Mm. And so you have a guy right now who, if you don't like him as a manager, that's great. But let's say you move him to be your, your, your director of football and he doesn't fi he finds you the next Nagelsman. That's a pretty damn good deal. And I, you know, none of those, none of that list has anything to do with the next Nagels. No, but that's the thing, though, is that that's why I'm saying that if you, if they, I believe they had a moment of clarity when they said, okay, we're going to hire this guy. He's going to be able to clean house. He's going to be able to get these bad contracts out. He's going to be able to develop youth, a far more fiscally responsible plan. And 
we can win in the process. Great. But now with these names that are coming out, and I'm not questioning the man's reporting. Um, this tells me that the board is back on their blank again, and they have no concept of what they're doing. You want to not great. Yeah, awesome. But look around you. How many former IAX managers have been given the time and the place and the space to thrive? There's outside? one place that they have, Barcelona. That's it. Okay. That's because it. because they understand the culture and they know, hey, we're going to bring this person in. Yep. They fit our DNA. Yep. Cool. It might take a minute. That's fine. We know right. what we're doing because they understand our footballing language. Manchester United doesn't have one. No. And it's even more muddled now with this kind of stuff. Yes. Like, if this is where, like, if you had a chairman or somebody who actually came out and explained the move, because, like, what, what you say about the, the contracts and stuff, I can understand Rangnick making that appeal and it clicking with some people on the board. And that's what decided it because the, the football inside of it, he didn't fit the roster they had exactly. He didn't fit the star players they had. Now, if they're looking to get out of a Ronaldo deal they had just signed a couple of months ago, then they're still idiots. But anyway, yeah. um, it, it's all but, muddled across but, but the board. But you and I have seen the same Rodnick interviews where Rodnick, where, where people, these people toss these questions at him. Like I'm managing a uh, U14 girls team. Can I implement this system? He says, yes, you can absolutely implement the system. It's no problem. And then, you know, or I'm running a, you know, sure. a, you know, a, a, a division two uh, men's team at, Yes, yes, please implement the system. It's great. He he believes he can have. There's it. not the way this way of playing. And that's how he pitches it though, and which is sure. where it's appealing. He says, sure. it, it could be. I mean, and the board could fallen for it and then really not understand it. And that's he's where I keep coming back. To. Is that he's not a snake oil yes. salesman? No, I, Nick. I'm sorry. Like he doesn't have the pedigree of winning at a club that has that expectation, like Manchester United. Okay, so who's yeah, out there right now that does? Um, the people on that list that we just mentioned have won more than Ralph Rangnick has. Okay. Eric Ten Hag runs a system that we've only seen succeed in two places. And everywhere else, when they talk mm. about it, it's like, ooh, my gosh, we're getting the Dutch system. And then they get the Dutch system. And all of a sudden, it's like, oh, this is the most boring crap I've ever seen in my life. Get it out. Wait, well, guys, we're getting like one zero wins. Like, what's, what's, what's the problem here? We're getting three points. Oh, get it out. It's boring. Ah, it's terrible. Oh, did somebody poop in the cornbread? What the hell's going on here? And, 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 and so they chase him out, right? Even though you were winning, you chase the guy out because it's boring. And oh my God, because they don't want to be a part of the building process. Um, and then you have any of these other guys out there. That's that's fine, but how many of them have their their distinct style that they built up and they and they they hand, they they say okay I can explain it in a nutshell. This is what we do. Pochettino one hundred percent does. Here's my Pochettino elevator. absolutely one hundred percent does. But Pochettino's brand is diminished right now because of PSG because the players are he's he's underperforming. <laughs> yes, but but well he's underperforming leading league by. 10 points no, and but, he but, but is, we know what the we, i know come on we're, we're, i know we're, i know we're gentlemen but he, we're gentlemen okay lies do not become us that we know how crappy legal one is it is it's it a is. disaster zone but did he get knocked out of the group stage in the champions league no well, we'll see what happens in the champions but, league because that's what he'll be defined go on ahead, but, john. go ahead john i see over there you, you, you're right okay go ahead. Go just go ahead. Go ahead. I'm, uh, it's pointless for me to continue this cool. so let me well i i, I just want to i want to try to to understand here. So Rognick has his definitive style. And yep. if he continues to be either, you know, it's, let's say he, at the end of this season, whatever Manchester United decides, Rognick goes to his Uber consultant category. If that's what it is, we don't even know. Like that's, that's where I'm so baffled about this. This is why I wish somebody from the board or a CEO or executive had clarified. Right what they're doing, what the plan is, because when Rangnick's first interview is, 
I might recommend to keep myself in right. this job. Right. It's like, whoa, what? what? <laughs> like, there's there's not an obvious direction here is what I keep going back to. And, and, and that list makes me feel like there's even less of a direction. It just and, feels and, like everything's being thrown up in the air. And that's, and that's where I was trying to find some commonality here with Rangnick. Say he goes into whatever his uh, ethereal role is next season, whatever title you want to put on it. The names on that list that would be the next manager of Manchester United, if Ralph Ragnick isn't in a position to hire himself, and goes and goes to the administrative side of things. The Venn diagram of those names in Rognick, there isn't a whole lot of one, is there, when it comes to stylistic ideas with those names and what Rognick wants to do with his philosophy. So if there is someone that's on that list that would be close, and it might be Ten Hag, if Ten Hag then says no, then where do you go? Do you go on that list and you still have this clash of styles? I mean, it's it's this to me is like it's oil and water, it seems, with a lot of names on this list. And what Ralph Rangnick either wants to do himself or wants to accomplish in whatever this role is supposed to be that, that's supposed to happen next year if he's not going to stay on the touchline. Nick, it just seems like there's a lot of oil and water here with these names. You're muted, Nick. You're... Yes, I muted myself because I was going to say some strong words. Fine. I'm just. I'm trying to. I'm trying to understand. Uh, it's this like this is required for this topic. Because, under, because understood. It's... But it just seems like that the the names that are being put in as successor right. to Ragnick don't match what Ragnick wants to do stylistically. And why would these no. guys sit there and go, okay, I'm going to do what he wants to do and go against who I am as a manager. Well, That's but, but John, but this is, this is the problem. We don't know what Rangnick's job is after his six month term is up. Right. He's not a director of football. He's not a general manager. Right. right. He's a consultant. Right. He's still so a consultant. like it has nothing to do with going against what he wants to do. And has, you're not working for him. Like that, that gets back to this whole confusing nature of, like, we see interim guys hired all the time. Right, right, right. And generally, an interim guy is not coming in to rock the boat. But an interim guy is either trying to get the job full time by being successful, yes. or they're going to keep things moving along and and keep it steady, keep everything from falling apart, keep the wheels on the on the bus. That's not Rangnick, and he has not done that. And, and that's to his credit. He has been himself. He's come in. He's He's been outspoken. He's trying to get them to play the way he wants. That's a work in progress. That's not going to happen overnight. But he has stayed true to who he is, right? which is not like an interim role. So it's this, it's this really confusing thing of, okay, we're going to bring him in. We're going to give him six months. Right. He says he might recommend hiring himself. That's a recommendation. Mm -hmm. He can't hire himself, literally, because he's not going to be in that job. But what is his job? And then if you're looking at a Pochettino and, and a Ten Hag, why did you go to this step as an interim anyway? Because it doesn't all seem to really fit very well. Maybe there's actually a, an idea behind the scenes that somebody has. We don't really know who on the board level or in the front office. But maybe there's something there. But so far, it looks like they made a move and didn't really know everything they were getting into, and now it's really weird and confusing. I, I, I think they, I, again, with Rongnick, he's not a snake oil salesman. He promises you, he promises you a, a very specific style of play, and he says he can do it in a very financially responsible manner. That is attractive. The only thing rich people like more than winning is getting richer and keeping more of their money. And if Man United feels that they have a way to be relevant in the Premier League, they currently are because they're in fourth place. They're not in eighth, they're in fourth. And they can stay in that top four and they can secure Champions League. And he says, okay, baby, it's time to start jettisoning, jettisoning some of these bloated contracts that we have. And we're going to see, I, I already identified youth talent who we can bring up now. That's no transfer fees. That's far better for the bottom line. And we're going to be more competitive. That's 
isn't that what we talk about all the time is as teams should be developing talent and building from within and all of a sudden that's not great because that's not the pedigree he doesn't have the pedigree to do it and look if he's promised them this there's a reason why the board hasn't come out and said well uh we're gonna see what happens with ralph rongnick here and he's doing a great job so far vote of confidence no nothing when he's benched stars has the board come out and said anything no. Has there been any leaks from Manchester Brass that says, yeah, we're really kind of questioning nothing, which means they endorse it. <laughs> and as long as they're endorsing what this man's doing, there's no reason to think that he's going to be out of a job anytime soon. And he's been front and center. He's given very, very direct answers in every press conference he's had. Player didn't do this. Player's out. When he decides he wants to play for us again, he can go back on the field. And not one word has come out from Manchester Brass. You look on social media, and social media, again, there, there's a huge difference between real life and social media. But largely people are like, yeah, man, take it to them. If they're not, the players aren't busting their ass for the team, get them out. There's, what this guy's doing is working for now. And we all know that that can change because pressing is a culture it's not just a system. You got to believe in it. You got to put your whole heart into it, because if there's gaps, there's going to be fundamental, uh, fundamental failures and breakdowns, and you're going to get just ran. This man is going to be employed by Manchester United next year, I think, in the coaching role. If he's not, and I'm going to play, as I was going to say before, I'll play Jason's game. I think it's Pochettino who is the guy who is most likely to come in, and and who can marry for lack of a better term, his system with elements of what Rangnick wants to do. And I think Tin Hag is going to want something where there's a more of a direct pipeline. There's more of a connection between the first team and the youth system and how he can, you know, what kind of governance he can have over that and his ability to develop players and play younger players. And I don't think he's going to get that kind of control that he wants and or needs, nor do I think he's going to get the time necessary to install that system at Man United. Uh, whether it's another team that wants to come in and do that, that's fine. I am personally, I'm done dealing with the Dutch system from a couple of perspectives. One, I'm tired of fans saying they what they want the Dutch system. We want this. We want this beautiful passing system. But we have zero patience for the buildup and the time necessary to develop it. And I'm tired of this this idea, this pie-in-the-sky thing that has been successful all over, all over the world when it hasn't. So when it works, it is undeniably gorgeous. But if it's allowed to sit and work and develop, it can be beautiful. No one wants to invest the time in it. With Rangnick's system, it is an on-ramp. I love it because I think it's the perfect on-ramp. We disagree. That's fine. But I think it's what Man United needs right now because they're trying to play catch-up with state-sponsored teams now. And you can be a billionaire, but they're billionaires with little bees compared to Saudi Arabia. <laughs> Guitar Sports Investments, N name it, City Football Group. There, there's Big Billionaire with the big B that's in like a size 72 font. And there's Glazier Billionaire, which is a nice capital B, probably in about a size uh, 27, 28 font. So there's limitations. And you have to make things work. And Rongnick's doing that. I, I don't understand the, the issue. I, I really don't. I I get that you don't like the system and you think it sucks and you think it's uh, against all things wonderful football. That's fine. But the man took RB Leipzig from being a bomb team and made them unbelievably relevant. To you think he didn't do that with any money or anything? Numbers. You don't think the money had anything to do with, with what he did at Leipzig? Just it was all, all his style? Nothing think, to do with I investment? Think, I think it was – he. I think it was he did talent identification, which yes, it did cost money. It was not free, and I think that he was able to to build a, a system that anybody could play. There's a much larger pool of fish that are capable of doing what he wants to do versus what the Ajax's of the world, the Barcelonas of the world want to do, 
and that's fine. But I don't have to pay as much for those guys over there as I do for these guys over here. And I can develop them and say, hey, early on, I want you to focus on being physically proficient and you'll grow into bigger situations. I'm not asking you to be this silky smooth passer under the brightest lights with the loudest crowds on, on the biggest stages of all right out of the gate. No, run hard and work and we can work on everything from there. So you can not like that and that's fine, but I don't know. No, let me, let me sort of snake oil salesman. Let me, let me clarify something because you're going down a stylistic thing when I wasn't talking about his style. I, what, what I'm saying is I don't think the board has a plan. They haven't articulated a plan. Mm-hmm. Now, maybe they have one and they just haven't shared it. Maybe they don't want to talk about it. Maybe whatever. That's fine. I'm going by what they have been as a club, what this board has done for a long period of time, what the history is. Mm-hmm. I'm going by that and what we've seen and heard and, and reporting like Ornstein, who I don't think is making up those names, right. to where it all feels very disjointed. Mm-hmm. What I'm saying is that he convinced them, and take that in a negative sense if you want, but he convinced them to get hired. And I don't think there's a plan to actually do everything that he would want to do because he can't do that in six months. And I don't think he's the manager next season if you're talking about this level of talent in terms of managers. Like it, none of it seems to fit into a coherent plan. It's not about the style. The style is is a, a personal taste. No, I don't like the style. That doesn't make my opinion about Manchester United's plan it has nothing to do with it. And what I'm saying is I don't think they have one. I don't think they've had one for a long time. I don't think they found one now. And if they did, then yes, he did convince them of it mm-hmm. because they haven't had one. Because going from Moyes, which made sense after Sir Alex, to Van Hall. To Jose at that point was insanity. Oh, yeah, complete insanity. Then it was smart with Ole, and they kept him around, but they never truly no. were behind him, it felt like. No. He did everything he could with that group. He gets fired because he couldn't take it further, which is the pressure of the job at Manchester United. Mm-hmm. And now you're bringing in something that's completely and utterly different. Maybe they had an epiphany. Maybe he helped them find the epiphany. Mm-hmm. But when you get a report like this with those names, it doesn't sound like there's really an epiphany. It sounds like you're flailing again. But, they, but whenever Rangnick was first hired, we heard a very similar thing. That Rangnick, whenever he was very, whenever he was first hired, the, the name Ten Hag started sprinkled around. That oh, like, Rangnick's going to be there for a year, and then they're going to bring in Ten Hag. And yeah, and you never know. I mean, it, it, reporting is tough because we're on the outside of it. We're hearing people right. say things. They might have pieces of information. They might be trying to connect the dots. It, it's hard to say. Like At this stage, I think we have a little bit better picture of it because Ten Hag name came up about being hired instead of Rangnick. Um, so did Pochettino's name because he's been mentioned many times with going to Manchester United. Time. Yeah, so like those things are have been around. So, I mean, maybe they tweak the story. Who knows? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Okay. But here's why I think it's radio silence from the Man U board. They're gonna talk. They're if with large publicly traded entities as Man U is, massive upheaval is typically met with anger and fear, which does not benefit stock prices. People holding on to your stock. And keep the value of your company being up. So they will make these moves quietly. And then in one quick hit, be like, but 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 And we're moving forward here. And so mm-hmm. I think. I don't know. I, I, I'm not buying it just because of what you said about who Manchester United is. Being a public company. Having the shareholders. Having to deal with all that. Because sure, they want to make money which they have been doing for a long time. They, they, they have not been losing money by any stretch. Right. And to keep making it, there is a style component to it. There's a star power component to it. We've, we've had the conversation. We don't need to rehash it again. Right. Just, I'm really curious to hear the drum beat now. If these names, if, if Ornstein's just throwing something out there, this is just stuff that's floating in the ether. 
or if they're really looking at what's next this summer, because I don't think there's going to be a bigger job available this summer than Manchester United if they have that job open, which I think they probably will. I mean, they're going to have to make a decision. It's going to be open in some form or fashion because they're going to have to make a decision. Manchester City is not going to be open. I don't. Chelsea, I mean, there's there's starting to be some cracks, I guess, that people are trying to point. I think Chelsea's exhausted. I think as a team, they're just gassed, and that's why the, the performances have dipped a little bit. I don't think there's any more to it. If, if people want to start a narrative about Tuchel, I think they're wanting to start a narrative about Tuchel. Um, Liverpool's not going to be open. Barcelona's not going to be open. Real Madrid won't be open if they win the league title and, and do everything they should do. PSG is always a different weird thing, and it could be open because they might go to Manchester. Yeah, I don't know who the hell they go get. Uh, Bayern's going to be not open. Um, Juve won't be open. I don't think Allegri's gone after a year. Nope. Inter's happy. You know, there, there's not going to there's not going to be another job that's going to get the intrigue. And this there's going to be a ton of intrigue because there is the keep Ragnar. There is the go get Pochettino from PSG. There is go get Ten Hag, who's been talked about as one of the up and coming stars. I mean, what if Ajax has a good run here in Champions League knockout stages and he can command a top dollar for that next right. spot because right. they look pretty good right now and, and they can be a surprise. Um, I don't know. If anything, if I'm Newcastle, that's why I'm desperate to stay up. Because if I can, if I'm Newcastle, then I call Ten Hag and say, "You, we will build you the finest facilities on earth here, the greatest youth program this sport has ever seen, and you will be directing it from day one." Uh, you're not going to get that control at Man U. And look, when's the last time Man U won the Prem? I, I'm as an honest question. I don't know. It's been a while. Uh, it was Ferguson's last year. It okay. was. All right, when's 12, the last time they 15. won the Champions League? Oh, wait. Okay. They're still one of the wealthiest clubs in the world. They've been a pretty... They're me- the wealthiest. Yeah, they've been a pretty mediocre team, and they're the, still the, the wealthiest well, team. Wealthiest isn't the right way to put it for me. Sorry. Right. Um, they're the right. biggest revenue. earner. Yeah, biggest revenue. Right. Yeah. Biggest revenue generator in the sport. They've been a pretty much a mediocre team. I don't think the board's concerned <laughs> about style large. killing them. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I don't know. I, I, sorry, I didn't mean to derail everything, but I, I wanted to clarify because I'm not talking about Ragnar's style when I'm saying the board doesn't have a plan. I'm, I'm saying it just looks like they don't have a plan. I know. And we'll see I'm what passionate they do. about my pressing, Jason. Yeah, that's fine. We'll I'm see if it's about the press. I, I know it's crazy. It's weird. It's starting to freak me out. But it, freedom you know. of the press, Jason. It's uh, uh, there you go. Good. Good, good luck with all of that. And we'll see how it goes for those teams that are doing it, and we'll Look, see what happens. It's, it's. Again, to me, it's the on ramp that it brings. I'm yeah, I know. But, it. it's the on-ramp. I know, and, and it's the on ramp, and I think the people who have success with aspects of it, same as the the classic Dutch style, which I don't think Ten Hag has. I think Ten Hag is is modern. Yeah. Pep, you could say, oh, he's, he's from Barcelona, so he's from the Dutch style. Nah, he's he's taken it different places. Oh, yeah, I think different. Ten Hag's taken it different places. Yeah. Klopp and Tuchel have taken Rangnick's ideas mm-hmm. different places, right. and they've had more success that he hasn't had in Belf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's the on ramp is one thing. It's really who can take those ideas and make them mainstream. Mm-hmm. Think about it like a like a, a musician or a band or any genre you want. Right. You've got the indie darling, underground critic favorite. Everybody loves them, but they're not selling out stadiums. Right. When you take somebody who can take aspects of what's great about rock or country or hip hop or any of it and can then put it into a mainstream perspective, a mainstream package. Yep. That's who wins ultimately. And, and I think your your best three managers in the Premier League are three managers who have done that in different ways, their own ways, they're their own men. But Guardiola, Klopp, and Tuchel, who are at the three biggest clubs, go figure, they're the three best managers. And they've they've taken ideas of others and taken them so much further because they're able to put it in that mainstream package and win. Right. It's gonna be fascinating to see. I mean, but when you go into what the summer could be, Manchester United will be the soap opera. And, and I'll give you one thing: maybe they were expecting more people interested in buying some of these stars from them in the January window than came knocking. I think that's something to consider as well. It's possible. We'll see. We got a 
few more days left in the transfer window. I don't think they're going to make any big moves. I think one of the biggest questions is Usman Dembele at Barcelona, who has been linked with Manchester United and pretty much everywhere else. Get this, the latest thing with Dembele. So we've heard the story about Barcelona taking him out, and they're not going to play him because he won't sign a new deal. And he's his, his agent's talking all kinds of craziness. So he was supposed to show up at the training ground yesterday. Mm-hmm. He wasn't going to be in the team to play last night. He's supposed okay. to show up at the training ground. Xavi's going to announce the team. Everybody shows up. He doesn't show up. They call him at home. He had a stomach bug. He had stomach problems. He wasn't feeling well, he said. Yep. Yeah, nobody bought that. <laughs> nobody bought that. He showed up today. Everything was fine. Yeah. Ah, that guy. That's Who, what we said, though. That's what we said when Barcelona started going bankrupt. We said, take the players in question that you want to get rid of, put their butts on the bench, and tell their agents they're not going to get in, find them a new home. Like that's what's happening. Good for him. <laughs> With this one, well, this one's a little trickier because he's out of contract in June, and they wanted to renew it because, just like they did with Umtiti, who they wanted to move on, they couldn't move him. Okay, then you have to renew him and give him more years, give him a lower salary, but spread it to help your your La Liga cap hit. You could yes. actually register Ferrantores. So with Dembele, like now they're really stuck because nobody's gonna buy him. I don't think. Although maybe there's maybe somebody gets squirrely. It's gonna be hard to get him off of your books completely, mm-hmm. and he won't renew. He won't do a new deal. So it, they can't really add anybody else until there's a resolution with Dembele. So that's why they're going nuclear because they have to. They have to get something right. because. If he waits until the last minute and they move him out, they can't add anybody. Then it's it's even more crappy for them because <laughs> they've lost him and they haven't been able to replace him. Right. Wait till the bitter end. Uh, try. I mean, Dem- Dembele's trying to to run out the clock, it seems, and try to hang on to everything humanly possible and try to to get a deal to a suitor. And it, this is a mess. And you know when you got a tummy ache when they call you at home, yeah, I got a, I got a, I got a stomach ache. I didn't come in today. Oh, that's, that's lame. That is crazy lame from yeah. him. And yeah. the stuff from his agent, like expecting him to get paid like an Erling Holland, is is chaos. Like Barcelona treated him more than good, and he has not lived up to his end of the bargain. Mm-mm. And now he's going to act like this. Yeah. Oh boy, it's not good. Uh-uh. It's not good at all. But- this is again the the what happens when you go star chasing, and you know Barcelona heading on in the right direction, getting the culture right, and it, but you because of the the nature of the contracts, you have to ride some choppy waters on the way to getting back to the culture you want to build. So you know, if he wants to stay home. And and call up and say, yeah, guys, sorry, you know, you know, poop my pants, can't come into work today. If he said that, Good, cool. stay home. Yeah. Wish you the best. We'll send you a big box of Barcelona branded Pedialyte. Have a good time. You know, let him stay. Yeah. Hell with it. I don't, I don't want him there. Yeah, they they want they want him to either do a new deal or move so they can add other people, and, and that's where they're stuck. Is they there's no other way. Like, uh, it was really, after Umtiti, it was him. Like, there, there's just no, they're, they're stuck because if you're not going to do that and they feel like they have to add their pieces, then they're probably going to have to sell Frankie de Jong. And they don't want to because, you know, he could be the heir apparent to Busquets, possibly different player, but he could be that guy. He's young. He's got a lot of upside. They'd like to keep him but they don't really have another marketable asset. Now, they have been linked, according to some reports, with a really interesting possible deal, and I think Nick will find this interesting. Um, we've talked about Ter Stegen and his kind of decline over the years, and now he's maybe one of the next guys on the list that they could move on and, and get something for. Well, this would be a straight swap, according to some reports. Ter Stegen to PSG for Donnarumma. <laughs> 
Okay. I could see Mino Raiola doing that. Yeah, because he's not a room. Fee. Well, there's not really an agent fee. It's a swap. But take puts your client instead of being a backup to to some Costa Rican. And I mean, who knows? It's Costa Rican guy. Or, or take him to Barcelona and put him as the number one there. There, there will still be an agent fee, even if there's well if with they, with Barcelona and Mino. There's always be a back slapping and yeah. things, but this it makes a lot of sense actually. <laughs> no, it doesn't. I'll it, tell you why. Why? Because because Donnarumma is better with his feet than he was previously. His feet ain't Barcelona feet. Yeah, but <laughs> but is he a better goalkeeper than Ter Stegen? Yeah, Ter Stegen has really fallen off in my opinion. And that that may be the case, but I, it would it would be a situation where if you make that deal, it Javi has to pull him aside and be like, "Look, you're gonna be putting some long hours, my man, yeah. because yeah. you're gonna be doing some some serious footwork drills." Yeah, that, that's- that, you know, so if, if he's willing to do that, then that's fine. And I look, the poor kid was just worked by Mino Raiola and had that relationship. He, he, Mino really messed with that, the, the fact that he's been this kid's agent since he was literally a kid and worked it to get God knows what out of PSG to make that deal happen. It's a deal that never should have been made to begin with. You can yeah. go anywhere else. You never should have put him in that position. No, I totally agree. And, and and so if this deal gets done, great. Fantastic. But Barcelona fans need to be prepared for Your, your trade off is you get a much better shot stopper than what you're saying is right yeah, now. Yeah, he's a you get really elite. good shot stopper. Yeah, that's, that's, but you're yeah. you're gonna sacrifice a little bit in possession. You're gonna have to adjust for that. Mm-hmm. Probably handle it. Um, there's more stuff coming out. I, I guess this is all starting to pop up in Florence right now. Uh, more banners all over Florence. Uh, now with death threats to do some Vlahovic. Um Translated, your bodyguards won't save you. Uh, gypsy, you're done. They like oh. to throw the gypsy term around. Um, piece of ish. Yeah, it's uh, there's a lot of it. So, uh, yeah, Fiorentina is going to have to do some stuff to help. Look, protect an I, asset right when now. I when I tell you when I tell the, the audience when I tell you guys that there's any team you can leave Fiorentina for just not you it yeah it, when we talk when we say there was a riot over the Baggio transfer that's not an exaggeration um it, it is this club has major issues with Juventus and the way that they've handled transfers and player negotiations where they felt that it's underhanded and it's dirty. And um, this, you know, to refer to, to refer to him as, you know, to bring the name, the, the term gypsy is, I mean, it's a problem that is it, longstanding in, in Italy. For, it's it's longstanding where because the uh, you know the gypsies are very prevalent in in Italy and they are looked down upon um, you, you know it's okay, was Ibrahimovic got uh, blasted with this there's a bunch of other guys who've been blasted with uh, you know with this as well and it's just it's it's just terrible. I mean, Florence is, is a city that has long prided itself. It, it prides itself on being almost like the Boston of like from an intellectual perspective, you know, like the brain of America. Yeah. Boston's like, but we all know there's a lot of other stuff that comes along with that. Mm. And, and it's the same thing with Florence. It, it's Florence is, tries to be the brain and the, the, the creative, you know, heart of Italy and there's, you know, a ton of stuff that comes with it. And it's, again, it's something that they're going to have to figure out. And it's, it's messed up that they're doing that. It, the, it, none of this shocks me. Sam. Not a surprise. Yeah. No, it's not a surprise. But... Um, so keep an eye on that one. 
they're going to have to get a resolution quick. Like if they're going to sell him to eBay, they're going to have to do it fast. And Rocco might want to make sure he's got some extra security for uh, the stadium and maybe his stuff and all of that too, because I don't think once, once the player's gone, I don't think they're going to stop. You know, they're, they're going to be angry with all of it all the way around. Well, no, a Camiso is going to come out. The way this is going to play out is the deal is going to get, you know, if the deal's getting done right now, I guarantee you, uh, the player is getting his ass out of Florence immediately. Yeah. And, and I, what I hope doesn't happen is what I'm honestly concerned with. Um, hopefully Camiso has got some smart people speaking to him about how to play this because we saw his last interview with financial times where he ripped everybody and complained about everything. Mm-hmm. If he comes out and is derogatory about Dusan and says, well, we wanted to sell him over here, but he didn't want to go to England. He didn't want to go to Arsenal. Right. He only wanted to go to Juventus. Mm-hmm. If he does that, yeah, he's going to make it a whole lot worse. Yep, absolutely. He's going to. That's exactly and what I, he's going to say. That's going to be his play to, to protect himself mm-hmm. partially to explain the deal because that's legitimately what's going to happen here. I mean, right. that, that is what, that's the story. Vlahovic doesn't want to go to the Premier League. He wants to go to Juventus. He's been a Juve fan since he was a kid. Right. So that's where he wants to go. He's going to manipulate the deal to make it happen that way. He didn't want to sign a new deal in, in Florence, mm-hmm. and that was one source of frustration for Rocco. He wanted to sign him to a new deal, offered him a ton of money, said, no, nah, I'm good. I went out. I'm, out. I'm ready to go. Mm-hmm. But he doesn't want to go to England. He wants to go to the place that he shouldn't want to go if you're a Florence fan. So it's it's a mess. Yeah, he, and – Keep in mind, politics always at the root of everything. Yeah, really. yeah. Rocco wants a new stadium, yeah. and he has the the way to do it is to make an other. Yeah, and so, well, can he make sure that that Vlahovic is out of Florence before he he lights that fuse, no. please? He needs to because otherwise he he's going to have right a lot of problems to deal with. Yeah, I hope he does. But he's going to say yet again, this is. This is, you know, he'll come out and he'll be like, Gianni Agnelli would have never done this. Gianni Agnelli would have handled this like a gentleman. His grandkids are bums. His grandkids are rotten scoundrels. Yeah, you've got to win the PR battle in your own town. Yeah, Juve did this dirty and underhanded as they always do. Where are they getting this money from? We've been robbed. Florence, you've been robbed. And it's going to stir up the sentiment and, and, and the – you know, it's us against the world. And the problem is, it's not just your fans that are going to be churned up by this. Mm-hmm. It's going to bring up the absolute worst. And not only them, but anybody else who's going to come looking, itching for a fight. Yep. And it, you're going to see more of this. It starts off with, you know, gypsy this, gypsy that. And before you know it, you're getting into far darker territory. Mm-hmm. And um and but Camiso is gonna try to I if he doesn't try to spin this to his advantage for the stadium deal and you know keeping the the, the people people's eyes focused off of any dip in form that may come, I will be very impressed with Rocco. But I I think it's exactly what he's going to do. The minute this goes final, he's going to do it. I I hope that he at least... Because I get saving his own Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in this situation. I understand that. But I hope that he does it the right way because if if he doesn't, well, then Dusan should probably have that Dembele stomach bug uh, when Juve goes to Fiorentina in the next time around. He probably shouldn't want to go to that place at all. Yeah, that it's going to be. It would be wise of him if he scores not to celebrate. Yeah, I have a feeling, yeah, that too. Yeah, I have yeah. A feeling after this, it, the minute they started dropping the gypsy term, I think it's going to be he's going to you know if he could do cartwheels and backflips, I think. Yeah, no, I understand. It. He he should really be injured for that game really should be injured. good grief well, and there's no there's no uh you, you know I, I was explaining this to my son about 
uh, about ultras and, and you know people are, you know some p- folks here in America are like I'm an ultra I'm a, no you're, no, you're not. <laughs> no you're not um, e- even it's completely different yeah even the most corporate friendly teams in in not just in Italy but Europe there is an undercurrent of aggression within some of these ultra groups that is it's absolutely nuts. Keep in mind that they had there was a report that came out not long ago about uh, a couple of ultra groups. One ultra group, I believe, it was a Juve ultra group that had a, an anti aircraft missile yeah. uh, in their stash, right? And there's different yeah. tiers. The first tier is you're selling chapstickies outside the stadium. That's your sort of base revenue driver. Uh, then you have tickets. When you know pre COVID, especially. Uh, the team would give a certain amount of tickets to the ultras. The ultras would sell them at like a 300x markup to, to the um, to the tourists. Then that's another revenue driver. And then you have everything else that surrounds it, whether it's drugs, prostitution, um, any of this, uh, these other ancillary, uh, you know, vice businesses that that are revenue drivers for them. And the the trade off is. The team engages with them, and they agree not to tear the joint apart. Right. And that's fine and great, but there are things that will break that sort of truth, and that is things like this, Mm -hmm. (laughs) where some player comes in and watch him put a a hat trick on Fiorentina the next time he's there, and the lid's going to come off. So... I really hope Rocco does the right thing and just says, look, it's business. The player didn't yep. want to go to Arsenal. He wanted to go to Juve. He's been a fan since he was We got kid. the best deal for the club. Uh, blah, blah, right. blah, 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 blah. Yep. Yes. The best we could for everybody involved. We came out like bandits. I'm not terribly mad about it. Let's I hope away. so because last day of the Serie A season, Juventus is at Fiorentina. Oh, God. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Storyline writes itself. Mm-hmm. Yep, because that could be a very important match for both teams. That could be huge. So <laughs> buckle up. Um, we'll see. This move, I think, will get done pretty quick. It sounds like it's it, it's it has to be. So yeah, fast. And for everybody involved, now it's going to have to get done really quick. Yeah. All right, we got to get into picks of the week. Oh God. Yeah, That's the crazy. first picks of the week of 2022. Actually, the second, but it's the first one in the new the, season. The new season. Of that. New season. Yes, yes. yes. Um, since I, for some reason, keep turning into T-Pain, I have no idea what this will sound like. Um, I, uh, I apologize because I, I can't even see what y'all are seeing with well, me turning you, into T-Pain. You may, have, like, some, you may have a site open that is just draining your bandwidth, buddy. I don't like really. Some of these, like, you know. Do you have like a Sicilian based betting site or something? <laughs> no, no, I don't have any of that. That's gone. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, I, I can't think of anything it would be, but I, I'll, I'll close everything out. So hopefully we'll see how this goes. Let's uh, let's see how this goes with picks of the week. Because you guys don't know how it went last week. No, I gave no. you no clues. I gave you no hints. None. No, nothing. Yeah, Zero. Teams, I can look, I can tell you one thing. I'll watch some of these games go down. I know where I'm not. So. <laughs> yeah. let's, let's, let's see who's where we can keep it moving with picks of the week Tuesday Dundee United hosted St. Marin Nick and Jarrett picked Dundee United everybody else picked a draw we were all wrong it was St. Marin this is a recurring theme where we all get the first game wrong on a regular basis uh, okay. everybody minus 100 Wednesday it was A.O. Kavala hosting A.O. Tricala, except it didn't happen. Postponed. <sighs> so going to Thursday, everybody's still minus 100. Thursday was Ivory Coast hosting Algeria. John picked a draw. I know you're shocked. That didn't happen. Ugh. I, Nick, and the Twitch pitch picked Algeria to win. We were wrong. Jarrett picked Ivory Coast and got it right. So Jarrett went to 225. Everybody else is minus 200. Friday, Parma hosted Frosinone. Jarrett and the Twitch pitch picked Parma at home to win. Nope. John picked a draw. I know you're shocked. Nope. Nick and I picked Frosinone. We got it correct. Wow. So we were we moved to 80 with the plus 180 on that one. Jarrett fell to 125. The Twitch pitch and John were minus 300. Of course we were. Saturday, Tanzania Prisons hosted Azam FC. 
Jared and the Twitch pitch picked the prisons. Uh-uh. I picked a draw. Uh-uh. Nick and John picked Asm at plus 120. So that moved Nick to 300, John to minus 80. I fell to minus 20. The Twitch pitch is over four at this stage. Jared, 25. Sunday, and this is what it came down to. There were three potential winners. The, the prop bet we'll come back to in a minute. That wasn't going to decide anything. That's a funny story in and of itself. Oh, God. Sunday, three potential winners for the week. If PSV won, I would win the week. Because I was the only one to pick them. If it was a draw, Jarrett would win. Because he was the only one to pick that. If Ajax won, then Nick won the week. Well, if you paid attention to the game, it's actually a really good game. I hope you did pay attention to it. Uh, Ajax scored first. PSV answered. Jarrett's looking really good. Ajax scored a dubious winner because the ball went out over the touchline and they looked at it with VAR and they didn't rule it back. Wow. So Ajax won. Nick won the week with 500. The Twitch pitch minus 200. Awful Twitch pitch. I'm sorry. You didn't defend your title very well. Uh, John moved to 120. Jarrett was at minus 75. I was at minus 120 before the prop bet. The prop bet needs its own music because it's absurd. So, the prop bet was cards in AFCON games last week. Okay. I'm going to run you through really quickly how this went. <laughs> because nobody was close. There was a winner in it. I got. I, was, I won the, the prop bet oh. by not being close. Because... <laughs> We were nowhere near how many cards there were in AFCON. Nowhere near it. The first day, you had, okay, a game with four cards. That's fine. A game with six cards. All right, that's a little excessive as Zimbabwe and Guinea, but fine. Um, you had a game with three cards. That, that's that's nothing. You had a game with three cards. Okay, that's fine. First day, you know, that's kind of normal. That's not too crazy. Uh, second day, you had three cards. You had a game with no cards. Probably the only game in the whole tournament with no cards. Uh, Guinea-Bissau and Nigeria. Well done. Well done, folks. You then started to ramp up the ridiculousness on Thursday, <laughs> where you had a game with six cards, including um, an on-bench personnel who oh. was not allowed to enter the field. Got a yellow card. You had the Sierra Leone-Equatorial Guinea match, which had... Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cards in that one. You had Gambia Tunisia with four cards, including always a good one when you see uh, a bench person, a player on the bench who gets a red card for violent conduct. <laughs> That's good. I'd like to know what he did. Uh, Mali and Martinia had four cards. What really screwed the whole thing up for everybody. I want to make sure I have the right game here. You had some extra time in some games, so it got a little wacky. Burkina Faso and Gabon. There were three cards issued before the 10th minute. There were five cards issued before the 20th minute. Six in the first half. Then in the second half, four, five, six, seven more cards in the second half. Then a couple more in extra time. 15 cards. Nice. Nick ran away because there were so many cards. 15 cards. Jarrett picked 19 for the whole thing. Yeah. 15 in one game. That's nuts. So total in the week. Okay. And, and Jarrett, or Jarrett disappeared. He doesn't want any part of any of this. Nick will hopefully cut a promo here in just a second. 62 cards for the week. I picked 41. Yeah. And I had the most, and people thought that was crazy. I was nowhere close. When you get 15 and 1, that just absolutely blows the, the curve on it. But I got my uh, my extra 100, so I did not come in next to last. The Twitch pitch came in last. Jarrett was next to last. Then me in the middle, minus 20. John over on the positive side, plus 120. Nick with a 500 spot. Nice. The biggest one for Nick, he didn't get anything where he went out on a limb. But he got the Frosinone one with me. I just didn't get anything else. If, if PSV had won, I had it. It didn't really look like a winner. And I thought it was going to end up a draw. And Jarrett was going to get it. But uh, 
they showed a few angles of the goal. Like they kept talking about how oh, this angle looks like the ball's not out, so they're, they're not going to overrule it. It's like from an angle to the side where you can't see the line, the overhead one looked like the ball was over the line, which should have nullified the goal. They let it stand, and Ajax got the win. So Ajax wins it for Nick. Wow. Yeah, yeah, Coco, you wanted to spot us a week. Sure, Coco, sure. <laughs> that's uh, that's how the Twitch pitch acts these days, out of pure kindness. Yeah, sure. Yes. Um, uh, Sean, uh, now that the uh, captain of the Twitch pitch has, has disappeared because, you know, he, he's got a life and such, Sean's trying to uh, get him eliminated. I see how it is. Y'all are going to have to deal with your own uh, drama Twitch pitch, you know, to... to to be a, a front running club, can't have the backstabbing that I'm starting to see wow. here. I can't. Oh, this is going to get out of hand. I already see the Twitch pitch is going to fall apart. Wow. Not going to. Because then they're going to start not having, they're not going to agree on any kind of a third. Start voting game. captains, and it's going to get out of hand. I see how this is. Yeah, I see how it is. a lot longer for them to settle on games because they're all going to have their own ideas as to which game needs to be picked. Yeah, I see how it is. Well, well, okay, Nick is trying to figure out where it is. I have no idea why things have been acting weird. That's the one difference with this setup is it's remote. Like, we all connect to a place, and it's remote, and it pushes it out. Yeah. So uh, it looks like Rocco has wiped out Nick's Wi-Fi right now. So that part's on him. I don't know why mine's been weird yep. all night. Um, John sometimes gets weird, but his has been the best tonight, which is really weird because he has Bluetooth affecting his Wi-Fi somehow. Sure. That, is, that is accurate, yes. And, and, I and I also believe that the Mile High 17 is working on the Pogo t-shirt now as we speak. Oh, geez. Uh, speaking of which, our uh, order for the Soccer Factory shirts will be going in. We wanted to let the Olive and York jerseys get done and all of that. So we're going to send some money up to Mayfield, Kentucky, um, along with all the other money, because a bunch of you guys had already donated to them as well, and we're going to do some more things for them too. So just uh, stay tuned. They're doing really well um, with the rebuild process. Hopefully we can help them along the way, and, and maybe even I'd love to go see the place too That's, once we get a chance. So absolutely. We will see where all that goes as we're, we're trying to get Nick back on here, but uh, he's having problems. That's, that's kind of bad when you win the week and then you disappear. <laughs> you win the week. And then in time for cutting a promo, Rocco attacks your Wi-Fi. Yeah, you know, or Juve. I mean, either one. It could have been both. Um, who knows? But Nick might lose out his opportunity to um, to do a promo. You know, mm -hmm. sorry. We can only wait so long, Nick. Yes, that is true. He might forfeit. That that would mean John would win, so that can't happen. Though. Well, no, 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 no. Just forfeit. You're forfeiting the promo. I don't think you're forfeiting the win. No, no. No, we're just, if it was me winning via that, then yes, I, I would find a way to make that happen. But no, we're not gonna uh, not gonna make that happen. So John wins the week. No, we can't have that happen. Come no, on. no, 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 that can't happen. No, it has to be it has to be a, a legitimate win. You you can't you can't just have like it be a miscongeniality situation. If if the if the winner cannot fulfill their duties, then the the first runner up gets to be the winner of the week. No, it has to be legitimate. Absolutely, absolutely legitimate. Sure, <laughs> whatever. Mm -hmm. it's out of yeah, they did. Not really. <laughs> Where's your grammatical grammars? I have no idea at all, Big Shack. I have no uh, idea. I was going to say, I was going to tell Big Shack. It's like you know, I think you're right there, bud. <laughs> anyway, um. All right, since Nick is not uh, reappearing just yet, I have no idea what's going on with Nick. Uh, John, you have to cut the promo for Nick in Nick voice. Awesome. Go. <laughs> oh, man. Let me tell you something right now. Oh, that's not Nick. But that's what Nick would do. Nick would probably cut it as a Macho Man Randy Savage. You're going to cut the promo for Nick as the Macho Man. Of course. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Sometimes, you know, Okerlund, when you're sitting there at the beginning of the calendar year and you get the first time, it's important to take that first step. Yeah, Miss Elizabeth was sitting there. We're talking about what are we going to do? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the first step. We're going to take that win. We're going to add a step. Take one step, two steps. And you know what you do after you take that second step? You start getting into a stride. Oh, yeah. 
take the Slim Jims with you because you know it's going to be a long walk this season. You know what? You get that first step going. You get the win. Oh, Curlin, that's what you end up doing, brother. Now, Nick, you don't get to put your sunglasses on. You <laughs> lost your opportunity because you didn't show up at the time, and we had to send somebody whoa, 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 else whoa, whoa, out. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 no. The Rock's not no. going to let the bro. No, no, sorry, Nick. You missed your, you missed your uh, spot. You can keep yelling. That's fine. You, you missed your spot, and we had to keep going because the fans didn't want to sit on their hands and wait for you. So, you know, no, the great one would have showed up on time. I don't think the great one has ever missed his mark. The Rock doesn't need this. The Rock even wrote you a song. The Rock even wrote you a song, and then Rock, and then Jason Longshore comes and he and that jabroni oh, unplugs. Show up. He unplugs. He unplugs it all. That clown. Let me let the Rock tell you this. With picks of the week, I'm the best. You clowns. Or the pass rest the test. Of yeah. You all need to be hooking if you smell what the rock's cooking. Ah, the great one has done it again. They don't like it, do you? It's okay. That's fine. Jet Brony Longshore. Get, 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 Ralph Rangnick did the thing. You get out the way. John, go ahead and get your Metamucil. Get it out here with your bad food. Takes it. Jarrett Longshore. Jarrett didn't even show up tonight because the Rock, the great one, right there is the name. Look at it right there. Won the first pick. Yeah, good job. You broke your internet. And, and, and Rocco cut him off. And, and things like that. Thank you. Yeah, good job. Um, <laughs> next time, show up on time, Nick. That's all I'm gonna say. I can't help. I can't help that, that you <laughs> sabotage my Wi-Fi, dude. No, it wasn't me. It was Rocco. It was Rocco. Rocco or it was, was you, Rocco. Oh, this it character. This character. It, it could have been both. It could have been UV and Rocco teaming up for once on this. Really, one. really, it was probably. It was probably. Uh, it was probably UV by the end. Of it. We all, we all yeah, know. they they know they they obviously know. I yeah. figured it was Camiso after we were talking about. Uh, no, Camiso doesn't have that kind of pull, you know. And, and Yelly's grandkids. Yves knows where Nick lives. Could do that. You know? Well, you see, and I tried to I tried to filibuster as much. Yeah, I appreciate that, John. I really do. I really yes, appreciate yes. the attempted filibuster. Oh yeah. Oh, you see, I told you. That wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing. I was thing. this close to grabbing the Oakley M frames and doing the Macho Man on the way back. Yeah, and that's why I went I went to a vocal range that I knew I could handle <laughs> in the middle of the evening, and that's why I tried to cut it as Nick as Mach. That's I appreciate that. I appreciate that. It's, it was good. It was good. All right, so uh, have we started the new picks? Oh, no. No. We were, we were, we were well, trying to that. let you hit your mark I appreciate as best we yeah, could. That wasn't going to happen. No, We've got entirely too many troublemakers here. We do, Dalton. Mm -hmm. we the do name's Dalton. Dalton. Yeah, that's unfortunate. But you know, look, here's the thing: is that be, um, because of this, uh, it's pretty much a guarantee that this week's going to be a tank. So everyone just possible. line you up. Have any surgery planned, Nick? I do not at the moment have surgery planned, but uh, I went way out over my skis with this win. So uh, you missed the uh, the number of cards in Afcon, where I think you said it last week that either Jared or I would be right. It either be really low or really high. Yeah, I got closest. But I was still off by 21. Oh my God. There were 62 cards in Afghan. There was 15 in one game. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 15 in one game. Good Lord. One hits. It's, it's a crazy turn. One um, game. And, and yes, if you have not seen news from today, uh, we had conversations about this before the tournament about Cameroon being in a position to be able to stage this thing. And it wasn't all COVID related, although that was a big conversation. Yep. Uh, it was organization related. Well, you saw why that was an issue today with, uh, I think it's, it's 60,000 seat stadium. They're supposed to have 50,000 there because they were limited to COVID, but I don't think they were equipped to have 50 and I don't think they had 50,000 trying to get in and, What's the latest on it? I think six people have passed. Yeah, six was yeah. the number that I last saw. Um, crush at the gate. This was before the game, I think. It wasn't after. It was a little confusing at first. 
So I think the reporting was coming out after so people thought it was when they were leaving. I think it was people trying to get in. But it's it's an awful situation. Um, and this is uh, this was one of the questions. I think everybody looked at this tournament as, as you know, okay, COVID. How are they going to handle COVID? Do they have to postpone it? And the question for me was more about like you got stadiums that aren't done yet. Right. You, you've got some right. questions about this, and this was worse than anybody would have ever imagined. So, um, it's just, uh, you, you shouldn't leave to go to watch a game and not come back. And we, we've seen this happen before in different situations. So, you know, it's just awful that this is what's happened in this tournament. It, yeah. yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, infrastructure is important. And, yeah. uh, you know, this is why mm-hmm. <laughs> infrastructure is important. The, the not sexy stuff that's really important to doing big events is huge. Yeah. I mean, I think you saw how you should anyway connect the dots and how lucky – England and Wembley was that you didn't have this happen there because you very easily could have mm-hmm. with what happened with the year final. You very easily could have had a story like this. Mm-hmm. Um, and the talk that, you know, there's there's conversation that England's not going to bid for the 2030 World Cup now because they think they're going to get the 2028 Euro. No, they shouldn't get anything. No. And you can't have a tournament have this kind of stuff happen. They got lucky. Yeah. Cameroon did not get lucky, and people lost their lives because of poor organization. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 it's it, it, this is the stuff that nobody wants to talk about. This is the stuff that nobody wants to fund because it doesn't, you know, it's the ho hum. But this is the stuff that makes the difference in, you know, horrific situations, unfortunately. And yeah. it, and it's not limited to just Africa, as we saw. No, no, it's not. Saw, a, yeah, a, as you just that's said, the whole thing with with England, with England, yeah, with the Euro final, you had fans breaking down. I mean, it was a, a rush of people, you know, crush of people trying to get in. It's a minor miracle, nothing, you know, completely terrible happened there. So yeah, Absolutely. it is not just locate. No, because you'll have some knuckleheads who will say, but it, it, this is it's a tragedy. You, you, mm. know, you should be able to go to a game, talk trash, have fun. And And come home home. to talk about it. Yeah. Come home and talk about it. You know, so it's, uh, it's it's just incredibly sad. And, and, you know, the news out of Burkina Faso as well, not to get political, but now there's apparently a military takeover in Burkina, Burkina Faso. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's, it, AFCON making the news for not the right reasons. So hopefully there's some stability and some peace that can be brought to to that situation. Mm Mm-hmm. All right, so picks of the week. Um, Twitch pitch has got Sunday. You guys are going to have to sort that out yourselves. Uh, Nick's got a veto, and he gets two picks. I got a pick. Sean's got a pick. We'll have to go with a consensus pick, probably of a World Cup qualifier in CONCACAF or Congo Ball in place of Jarrett since he's not here. So, Tuesday. Let's see what we got. Um, it's a weird week because we've got, like, it's an international break, but it's not a full international break. For everybody, you've got World Cup qualifiers in this hemisphere only. Um, so the game, I have no idea where we're going to have to pick from. We've got Aberdeen at St. Mirren tomorrow. We have games in Colombia. Uh, is or Buka, Bucamaranga is hosting Millonarios. We got Morocco and Malawi in Afcon, Senegal and Cabo Verde. Those are the two knockout games tomorrow. We got Belgium. Uh, Brian Reynolds' new club, Cortic, is at Sporting Charleroi. We got the championship. I'm just wait for John to jump in with Coventry and Stoke, or QPR and Swansea, or Birmingham City and Peterborough. I was going to take the Aberdeen match, actually. You want to take the Aberdeen match? Yeah, I'll take the Aberdeen match. All right, that's John's pick. Nick? I will currently withhold my veto. Okay. St. Mirren hosting Aberdeen. We have a home dog situation. St. Mirren is a plus 240. The draw is 220. Aberdeen on the road is 125. Uh, Recent matches between these two. They played December 4th at Aberdeen, and the Dons won 4 1 in that one. They played in September, uh, September 26th at St. Mirren. St. Mirren won that 3 2. 
Last season, February at Aberdeen, scoreless draw at St. Mirren, one one draw. Coming into the match, St. Mirren has won their last two. Uh, Scottish Cup was over the weekend. They won the first game back. Remember, Scotland is one game back into league play after an extended winter break. Going into the winter break, St. Mirren was kind of crap. They had lost three of six and drew the other three. Uh, but they won their last two. They, they beat uh, Dundee United in one of our picks of the week last week, and they beat Air United in the Scottish Cup on the road. Aberdeen is unbeaten since coming back. They got a 1-1 draw with Rangers, a game where Rangers is crying about referees and, and hysterics when there was a really obvious penalty that they didn't give to Aberdeen. But anyway, yes. um, that was a 1-1. Aberdeen beat Edinburgh City 3-0 in Scottish Cup. Uh, before the break, Aberdeen had won four of five before the winter break. Probably why they're favored here on the road. So, Twitch Pitch. We'll get your picks on the Discord, so we'll get that before tomorrow. And I think, uh, Cassie, are you the one who's trying to get this done on the Twitch pitch? Oh, you don't have to give us the, the uh, St. Mirren's odds plus 240. I think you're handling it on the Twitch pitch. Thank you, Cassie. All right, good job. Uh, you guys have got your Sunday sorted out. Good job, Twitch pitch. You're well organized. Maybe you do need a captain change. Hold on a second. Um, Jared's not here to make a pick, so I'm up first. I am picking Aberdeen on the road to win. John. As am I. Nick. Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I, I was close to picking a draw, but I, I got I'll a chance to see Aberdeen. I'll take because somebody has to do something different here. Yeah, I, I, I feel like Aberdeen's in a really good place. That's why I'm going even on the road. I think they'll get the win, but, man, the draw's not a bad pick. pick. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. All right, Wednesday. AFCON, Ivory Coast, Egypt, Mali, and Equatorial Guinea. We got more in Scotland. Uh, if you're a gun for punishment, you got Hearts hosting Celtic. You got Rangers hosting Livingston. Uh, you got more in Colombia. I feel like they play every day now. It's chaos. You've got Ligue 1 with Anger hosting Saint Etienne. You've got Belgium. You got West Brom hosting Preston North End. You got Serie B, Lecce, and Vicenza. You've got A League, MacArthur hosting Perth Glory. You got the Chilean Primera División. I guess there's a playoff going into the new season, which is weird for a relegation spot. Huachipato hosting Deportes Copiapo. Huachipato Copiapo. I do not know them. Um, Point of order. Point of order. What? There's not a lot to pick from. I will pick Ivory Coast in Egypt because that should be a banger. Okay. It should be. It should be. Let's get that one on the board. Um, the odds makers do not agree with you, Nick. They do not agree with you at all. Ivory Coast plus 125. The 90-minute draw plus 190. Egypt plus 275. Mm. Um, Egypt hasn't looked very good in this tournament. Um, these teams haven't played one another since 2013 in a friendly, the Ivory Coast one. I don't think they've played in a competitive match ever. That's interesting. Egypt has won two games, one nil in the tournament. They lost the first one to Nigeria, one nil, not exactly lighting it up. Um, Ivory Coast in the tournament beat Equatorial Guinea. They drew a Sierra Leone on that crazy, horrible South of Sun goal they gave up. They beat Algeria kind of like a drum three, one. Okay, I get the odds. That makes sense. But Egypt is, they got the talent. We know they do. It doesn't look like it. So, John, what are you picking? Draw 90 minutes. Is anybody surprised about what happened? Oh! oh. Yeah. <laughs> Nick? Ivory Coast. Cote d'Ivoire. In, his, in the, uh, the match that he believes will be a banger. Banger. I am going to take the 90-minute draw as well. I think Ivory Coast gets it done, but I, I think they do have to sweat for it. Egypt will at least make them work for it. <clears throat> Thursday, we got Conda Ball World Cup qualifiers. Three of them. There's two on Friday. We got Ecuador hosting Brazil. We got Paraguay hosting Uruguay. We got Chile hosting Argentina. Lionel Messi is having dinner at Sushi 99. He's not even there. 
Uh, we got CONCACAF, USA, El Salvador. We got Honduras and Canada. We got Costa Rica, Panama. We got Jamaica hosting Mexico with no fans. Keep that in mind. That is true. We, we do have Asian World Cup qualification as well. They are active in this window. We got Australia hosting Vietnam. Japan hosting China. That's a rivalry that goes back a while. Saudi Arabia hosting Oman. And some of these hosting things might not actually be hosting because of all kinds of situations. So we can double check if you want to pick any of these. UAE hosting Syria. Iran hosting Iraq. Speaking of rivalries. <laughs> wow. Lebanon hosting South Korea. Um, we've got some other leagues and stuff. You know, we could do the U.S. game. That That's... That would be an easy consensus pick. We could do Ecuador, Brazil. I think it would be an easy consensus pick. Jamaica, Mexico is very interesting. I'm kind of intrigued by the Iran, Iraq, or Japan, China games. Yes. But the odds don't really make those very interesting, though. Like, take a peek. Uh, Iraq is a plus 900. Iran is a minus 278. And it is in Tehran, according to Sofa Score. Um, Japan and China, I think, would be in Japan. Yeah, it's in Saitama. Okay, so Nick's got another one. We've got to use the consensus, and I got one. The consensus is going to be hard to use another day because Friday and Saturday, there's not a lot to pick from. Right. What is the, so, what's the odds on uh, Ecuador and Brazil? Um, actually, really interesting. I'm I I'm put to the floor that we do Ecuador Brazil as the consensus pick in place of Jarrett. Second. I think that's a pretty good one. You cool with that, Nick? Uh, you will receive no veto from me on that one. Okay. Just because I think Friday and Saturday, like we're gonna kinda need to pick one, Nick, because there's not as many to pick from. Right. I, you know what I mean? This is an easy right. one I don't think anybody would be too upset about. Ecuador at home hosting Brazil. Brazil is not lost in World Cup qualifiers. They have drawn. Ecuador, 220. Draw, 220. Brazil, plus 125. Favored, but not crazy. Um, last time they played was in the Copa America. 1-1 one, one game in Brazil. Uh, before that, World Cup qualifiers. Earlier in this stage, it was in Brazil. Brazil, 1-2-0. Um, last time in Ecuador was 2016 that they played the World Cup qualifying and Brazil won 3-0. That was not good. Ecuador hasn't lost since a trip to Venezuela on October 10th. In qualifying, they won their last two games in the November window. They went to Chile and they beat Venezuela at home. Brazil has been killing it. They're already clinched, so keep that in mind. Um, they did not call up, oh, I think it was right on Lodi here, because he is unvaccinated, and you have to be vaccinated to go into Ecuador, so everybody else should be good. I think they called up a pretty much first-choice group, but they're qualified, so they might be looking at different guys. They drew in Argentina last time out. They beat Colombia. They beat Uruguay at home. They went to Colombia and drew in October. Um, that's the last blemish on their record here. So, Nick, what are you picking? I I will pick. Um, That's a tough one. It is a tough one. God, there's so many different permutations. There are a lot of variables. A lot of variables. The great Sun Tzu uh, said that if you are uncertain, do not advance the army. I'm not advancing my army. I'm going to say it's going to draw. Nick is picking a draw. <sighs> gambler in me is, is pleased with that but the man mm -hmm. is not pleased mm. Mm. Ecuador wins I like it there you go John Brazil John it's fun Let's see how it is <laughs> he finally makes a pick that's not a draw and he gets pillory by this of course man. El Modiflo wow. perfect Tommy just remember John picked Brazil to beat Ecuador in Ecuador. Just remember. Just remember that one. Wow. Just saying. That's oof. Jason Longshore. Oof, in Quito. Dropping the oof. hammer. 
Hey, you, you dropped the hammer by picking Brazil. I, I, I thought you were going to pick a draw, actually. So. Dropping the hammer on me. That's what I'm yeah, saying. I am. That because is craziness. That's, that is front running right there with Brazil. All right. Friday, we have two qualifiers in South America. Colombia and Peru, Venezuela and Bolivia. Outside of that. Friday, have... Friday, Friday. It's so, so stupid when you just start yelling for the stupid thing. I'm literally going to mute you before I get to Friday. And I might not unmute you the rest of the time. It's just so stupid. It's so, so stupid. Yay. Yes, the ch your champion approves, John. <laughs> yeah. So, so stupid. Okay. So, Friday. Friday. Huddersfield Town and Stoke. I had the lead hosting Sporting He Home in La Liga 2. I hold up. Um, what? I holding up, Nick. Doing all right? I'm doing all right. That's some checking. Yeah. How it goes. Um, there's not much of all, anything to pick here. We're going to have to really reach. Uh, yeah, uh, this this may be one where I actually allow the Twitch pitch to do like guinea pig FC versus. I'm gonna have to pick it. The Twitch pitch is Sunday. They they've got some qualifiers to pick from. They do. I am gonna go with Belgium. That's not anything in Serie B. Good lord. I know. I'm I'm gonna. Oh, I got it. I got it. We're going to Zambia. We're going to Zambia for Friday. The Forest Rangers are hosting the Power Dynamos. Forest Rangers. Are, are, uh, Forest Rangers are these like anti poaching units? Um, I'm just judging get... from their crest. Uh, it looks like a tree with a soccer ball in front of it. Forest Rangers Football Club. I mean, is this like the cap, like the Planeteers or something? Oh, okay. Well, uh, 1975, Forest Rangers Football Club started as community football team at Dola Hill Forest Station in the town of Nadola and joined the Nadola District Amateur League in 1976. Mm -hmm. Three years later, promoted to Division Three under the Copper Belt Amateur League up until the end of the 88 season. The club played Division One football from 89 to 91. Mm -hmm. 91, they finished runners-up in the Independence Cup competition to the then Kings of Zambia, the football Kings of Zambia. Then uh, sponsors, under cost-saving measures, disbanded the team in 1995 – 98 revamped through social football and they merged with Strike Rovers Football Club, played Division mm -hmm. One football. They retained the name Forest Rangers when Zafico Limited became sole sponsors of the club. And so they've been kind of uh, pogoing back and forth between the Super mm -hmm. League and Division One since the year 2002. Uh, Division One in 2014. Very instrumental in football talent, identification, and development through urban and rural football. So far, the club has produced the following notable players, and then there's a list of a lot of players from uh, 1993 to the present. So there you go. Okay. okay. Hmm. Power Dynamo. Oh, robots. Yeah, I don't know why I'm getting robots now. Um, okay, maybe I'll go away there. I think it did. All right, cool. Uh, Power Dynamos. Has a pretty cool logo. They were established in 1971. They are owned by the Copper Belt Energy Corporation. Mm. Sounds familiar. Um, so they're we the have a Captain Planet episode playing out right here in front of us. The first Southern African club to win a continental trophy after they won the African Cup Winners' Cup in 1991. Wow. Six time winners of the Zambian Premier League, seven times winners of the Zambian Cup, the Power Dynamos. We have odds on this game? Uh, that's debatable. Um, we do not. We know that the Power Dynamos are in seventh in the table right now. Forest Rangers are in ninth. We know that they based off on September 25th. The Power Dynamos hosted and they lost to one. The Forest Rangers have won the last three times these teams have met. The Forest Rangers come in off of a loss to Buildcon. Build con, and they drew three times before that. The Power Dynamos haven't lost in four. They drew their last two. 
They drew against our friends, the Prison Leopards. They drew at the Green Eagles. They beat the Concola Blades, and they beat the Green Buffaloes. I like this ambient league. This is a cool league. There's some really cool names. I like it. I need a Power Dynamo shirt. Well, they need websites that work because I tried to find the Power Dynamos and click on the website, and it doesn't. The site can't be reached. Yeah, you might want to be careful with that. Now John's going to go all grainy and t painish. Um, all right. So I got to pick here first because it's my turn, and I am going to take the Power Dynamos. John. Draw. Anybody surprised about what happened? No. No. Nope. You can't react to your own action. Why not? No. Uh, uh, anyway, give me the Nick. Chippendale Rescue Rangers. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> all right. I thought you were going down a whole different thing with Chippendale. It's like, wait a minute. Where is he going with this? One looks like Magnum PI, and the other looks like Indiana Jones. We know this. Yes. Something like that. All right, Saturday, Nick, you got to pick it. Um, you got Gambia, Cameroon. You got Burkina Faso and Tunisia. And then there's another game in Africa. We don't know what it is yet. You've got Scotland, Celtic and United, Aberdeen and St. Johnston. You've got Colombia. Millonarios hosting Atletico Nacional. That's a pretty big one. Um, you got Belgium. Beershot is hosting Zolte Vargem. God bless you. Um, you got Marseille hosting Montpellier in the Coupe de France. You got Fulham hosting Blackpool in the English Championship. You got Ibar hosting Olska in the second division in Spain. You got the Brisbane Roar hosting the Western Sydney Wanderers in the A-League. Western United hosting Melbourne City. You got the Paulista State League in Brazil with Santos hosting Botafogo SP. I don't think it's the, the, the big Botafogo. I think it's a separate Botafogo. You've got Sal Bernardo hosting Palmeiras. I'm sure that'll be a really competitive match. Um, you got the Croatian League. Uh, Sibnik hosting Hajduk Split. You got League One in England. Uh, AFC Wimbledon hosting Shrewsbury. You got the Indian Super League. Mohan Bagan hosting East Bengal. You got the Swiss Super League, Young Boys hosting Lugano. You got the Algerian League with Constantine hosting Kabylie. You got. Uh, oh, um, I know. <laughs> I know. Um, you got the Calcio State League in Brazil, the Battle of the Gremios, Gremio Esportivo Brasil. Hosting Grêmio. Let's 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 make this fun. Millonarios versus uh, Nacional. That's a good one. That should be a really good game, actually. It should be available on Fanatics. Fntz.co slash soccer down here. Uh, Millonarios is at home in this one. The league just started. These teams actually played. Yeah, they got one game under their belt. Millonarios won. Atlético Nacional drew in the opener. Um, last time they played was November, where Millonarios went to Atletico Nacional and won 3-1. Um, not surprising. So, Atletico Nacional drew with Cortulua on the road in the first week of the season. Millonarios went on the road and won at Deportivo Pasto 1-0. There was a red card in that one, so keep that in mind. All right, John, what are you picking? Uh, let's go with uh, Atletico Nacional. Okay. Let me see if I got odds for this. That might actually help a little bit. Uh, we don't yet. Yeah, I've got the odds for the 27th because Megan Arios plays the Bucaramanga tomorrow. Yeah, that's why we don't have odds yet. And uh, Junior goes to Atletico Nacional on the uh, day after tomorrow. Yeah, they play like every day in Colombia. So you're picking Atletico Nacional. Um, Nick? Uh, I will take Megan Arios. Nick's there. I'm picking the draw. It's early and low scoring. All right, Twitch Pitch, what you got for Sunday? I know, Sean. I was confused, too. No draw there. Um, I picked the draw. I'm trying to keep you all messed up. All right. Sunday, USA versus Canada. That is the pick from the Twitch Pitch. Mm-hmm. Makes total sense. Yep. 
Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, we don't have odds for Canada USA yet because the teams play on Thursday. So the final odds will be what we get. Um, I really, I was gonna, I was gonna be it, uh, Twitch pitch. Don't worry, I'm not vetoing this. Yeah, that's part you can't of me that, that wanted to do the spite veto. Here, no, but I'm not going. No, 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 no. This is a good game. You guys did well. You guys did well. Yeah, I'm glad you didn't go too crazy with this. You had good choices to pick from this time. You, you could have went Mexico, Costa Rica. Then beyond that, you're really reaching. You're not going to go Derby and Birmingham City, thankfully. No. Yeah. And that's a sneakier game than folks know. Why is it sneaky, John? Well, because you look at the point totals, you said, they're going, oh, Derby, they're next to last. But no, they're like mid-table if you apply the, the uh, 21 points back into it. They're like uh, 14th in the table if you add that back there, 35 points. Yes. All right. Nick, what are you picking? At Hamilton, I think the weather is not good. I think it's supposed to be in the twenties. Um, I don't know about snow. Let's let's look at the weather because we don't where I'm up right there. now. Hamilton, Ontario. So right now it's twenty-two degrees. Um, and it forecast could be snowing Sunday. 22 degrees is the high. The low is nine. The match will be in the afternoon, at least. Yep. Three o'clock. 22% chance of precipitation wins west-southwest at nine. Okay. Uh, It's going to be cold. Really cold. And it's on turf. Nick, what are you picking? Oh, Canada. Really? Wow. With no Alfonso Davies. Native line. Ustekio, who's going to Porto, has reportedly tested positive for COVID, but he's in the group. I guess they think he might be good to play in this one, but maybe more like the Tuesday. Patriots, we stand Are you going to sing French version? For the... Hey, do the French version. you come down to Stampede Wrestling anytime you want, Jason Longshore, and we'll put you <laughs> in a proper wrestling hold that i learned from Stu hart himself i put you in the dungeon no, okay pal all right and you will you'll be drinking nothing but labatt's blue for the rest of your days okay all right pal i don't really like labatt's blue that much uh, molson's canadian's pretty good I, I would always get that at the Rashers games it's like nick was drifting in and out of like don cherry and, and <laughs> the, the the mckenzie brothers all at the same time right. a little bit of kids in the hall mixed in all right, I am going to pick a draw here. I think it's going to be a crap game. Very cold, yep. no control. Teams coming off a of play on Thursday. Yep. I think it's going to be a draw, and it's going to be bad. Yep. I'm guessing you're picking a draw, John. Accurate. I figure it's a seven-point window. I figure it's a seven-point window for the United States. They win at home, draw on the road. Six, uh, six at home and a draw in Hamilton. Could be. That'd be fine. I'll take that. If you, you offered that to me now, I'll take it in a heartbeat. Um, the prop bet. Hmm. The prop bet is going to be about this game, and it will be the number of combined shots in the match shots, not or shots, shots on the target i was just about to say that shots not shots on target just shots combined in the match that in is a particular prop. match in the usa canada game in hamilton ontario shots not shots on goal just shots according to the official statistician for the match yes Well, did I actually use a reference that nobody recognized? Or at least Forecard didn't. Kids in the Hall. You go, go watch the clips oh, on the YouTube. Oh, Kids nice. in the Hall is great. There's so many better ones than the head crushing guy. But right. but it was but then you had the immortal battle of head crusher and face pincher. That not, was no 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 no. It, it, it was the uh, the chicken lady was one oh, of the best. Yeah, yes. sweet. <laughs> the the uh, slightly uh, whorish chicken lady is definitely one of the best sketches. Mm-hmm. Okay, four card knows it. Thank you. Okay, good. Yes. I was making sure four card. I was gonna get very upset if I had the elusive reference. All right, so oh, shots. Oh, the best intro themes. That intro. Yeah. The good... Yes. Yeah. 
Oh, Absolutely. it was uh, Shadowy Men from a Shadowy Planet. That, that is correct. correct. Very nice. Good pull. 90s, I'm good. You start going into your 70s references, John. I got nothing. But 90s. SCTV and soap, brother. SCTV what? was amazing. Yeah, I'm never going to end any of that. Oh. SCTV was amazing. Classic SCTV was, was unbeatable. I mean, I, yeah, yeah, I didn't know it. Odd. I didn't watch it. I, I can't, like, I can't say it was amazing because I, I just know it was good. That's all I know. It was amazing. Okay. Shots in this game. This game's probably not going to be as good as that. Probably going to need a lot of Molson's Canadian or Labatt's Blue or Canadian Whiskey. Going on down to Poutineville. Yeah. I can't go to Poutineville because they don't have those here. I wish they did. You made me sad, John. Thanks. What we're here for. No, you dude, that's not what we're here Tim for. Tim Hortons, you're a tourist, okay? We, we don't have a Tim Hortons here either. I can't go Tim there. Tim Hortons that's is just... only for tourists and, and people from Vancouver. Well, why you got to hit on the Vancouver people? <laughs> because they they're do? from Vancouver, okay? They're a bunch of salmon eating. See, uh, are you are you a newfie uh, now? Are you, are you from he's Newfoundland? Like, like an Ontarian. He's, hey, he's, all, he's he's running smack on the west. Is what you he. you need to understand that they're a bunch of salmon eating West Coasties, and they're and they're not true Canadians. Okay, he's a, he's a Quebecer. All of a sudden, <laughs> no, he, no. He's, if he's a Quebec Quebecer, he'd be French. He's a newfie. No, no, but you have like you have uh, he's a newfie. You have, you have the English speaking Quebecers with their with the French accent. Absolutely. The. Uh, is that a French accent? Oh, I didn't hear any of that. No, they, uh, God, uh, I mean, think of Boom Boom Jeffrey on the the first coach of the Atlanta Flames. Again, when did the Flames play? 1972. Bring them 19... home, by the way. Bring them home. Yeah, I'm, I'm down for that. That's fine. But uh, I, John, the Flames played mostly when I wasn't a, a like a person. Yes, FC Quebecois, exactly. Quebecois. Quebecois, and that's what Nick was sounding like. Nick was sounding like a, a Quebecois. But uh, uh, if you, if you, my if mom's you, side actually comes from Quebec. <laughs> wow, it's crazy. Nice work, guard. Um, but yeah, Nick, Nick was sounding rather Quebecois there. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, you go to Boom Boom Jeffrey on, and he talked about the Atlanta Flame and uh, how they try to do the best thing out there. They try to score most goal and win the game. It's beautiful. There's Boom Boom Jeffrey, one of the true characters of Atlanta sports in the seventies. To this day, part of lore here in the city of Atlanta with hockey. How many people do you think, if you walked down the street in, in Midtown, would know who you're talking about, or would even know what hockey is? Th- that would be the larger question. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what is the sport called? Hockey. <laughs> they wouldn't say it with that accent around here at all. <laughs> that wouldn't fit. <laughs> uh, number of shots in this game, Nick. <laughs> And in this particular game, there will be um, twelve shots. Twelve, John. Uh, twenty-six. Twenty-six. Twenty-six shots, not twenty-six shots on target. Yes, I understand. If it was twenty-six shots on target, then it would be an epic. But twenty-six shots is still a lot. Just yep. Yeah. Opening um, a lot of folks opening up from distance, trying to challenge the goalies. Also, Kevin Owens, by the way, fantastic, uh, fantastic, fantastic. Wrestler yes, from fantastic. Kevin and uh, Sami Zayn. Yes. Yes. Seven shots combined in this game. Oh wow! Wow! It's going to be crap. Okay. Uh, I think it's going to be really bad. Um, we'll see. We'll see where that goes. Okay, that's it. Sean left. Everybody left. That's okay. Four card went to sleep. We, we lost our entire audience. Night four card. No, we didn't. There's still people watching for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know why. If you're watching us at this point, I don't know why. I, I really don't know why. I know. It's great. Uh, Kefsi, the cutoff is tomorrow's a weird day because I'm going to do like a morning update and then we're going to watch Atlanta United and Georgia Storm. So St. Mary and Aberdeen's a 245 game. So Kevsy, you gotta get it to me by noon. How about that? Um on the Twitch on the Discord Twitch pitch version there. So just tag me once you come up with the finals with the votes and everything. That's right. So then I can add you and I'll see your timestamp. So you can't cheat it. Yes. You can't wait till the St. Mary uh goalkeeper has fallen asleep in the game and conceded three goals. <laughs> you, you can't do that. All right, cool. 
Uh, what else is on your agendas today? You go first, John. Well, I mean, we talked about the, the new manager at Watford, and that was uh, the biggest thing that broke just before the show started. And then the other thing is just keeping an eye on Christian Erickson. And uh, if Brentford is going to add him to their roster, and it's going to be a, a fantastic story if uh, Christian Erickson can come back and be a part of things with, uh, with Brentford in the Premier League to work with uh, uh, an ICD to help regulate his heart and get back to a career. Cause I know he wants to continue to represent his country. And I thought that that was a, a very cool thing is we might be getting closer to uh, Christian Erickson signing for Brentford. Yeah. Serie A is the only league that I know of that he can't play in. Like he legally can't play in. It's not, I don't even think it's a league thing. I think it's a, a I think it's a law. I don't know. I'm not sure. It's kind of a weird thing because they're the only ones. Because he, he could go to England and play. He could go wherever. Some talking might go back to Ajax. Um, but it looks like Brentford's going to get it done. So it'll be an amazing story. Um, are, where does that stand? I mean, is it about to be announced? What, what's the thing? Where's that? There's thing no. Stand? There's no rush because it would be on a free. So I think that I think Brentford is just going to to take their time to make sure that everything is in line. So they don't have to get this. Over, they don't have to get this over and done by the end of the month when Big Ben chimes. They, they can take their time with it. Uh, still in negotiations right now from everything that I've seen, but it, obviously it would be on a free, and they don't have to. They don't have to rush this. So, my guess is they'll try to bring him in because uh, Thomas Frank has uh, been with him in the past. I think in is U seventeen days, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Erickson's U seventeen days, and so. They need help creating. They need help in the middle to help create, to, to get Ivan Tony back on track when it comes to his goal production. So they need help sooner than later. But do they work it within the, the window here? That's the next question. Okay. What about you, Nick? What, what's on your agenda to finish up? Super Mario back with the Azuri. Mm-hmm. Uh, one is going to be fun either way. <laughs> so, yeah, true. Uh, yeah. What are you going to do? Immobile isn't getting it done for he, – he's getting it done for Lazio. He's not getting it done for the national team. Uh, Chiesa is out for, they say, seven months. God knows it's going to be about nine or ten because never trust an Italian physio. Um, they got to do something. You're, you, you know, this is what you have to do. So you bring in Super Mario from the wild. You, you, you're going to get, at minimum, three good games out of him. Um so that's what you need. And, and if anybody can get anything out of him, it's going to be Roberto Mancini. Mario Baltelli's skill is not in question. Um, he knows that this is a good opportunity for him to put himself back on the map. So I think he's going to ball out. So good for him. Get it done, baby. As long as you pack the gears to get the job done, welcome aboard. You're going to be very happy to learn, Nick, that there is no Nicholas Bentner news. Thank God. I would say my his name. <laughs> his name did come up in a story, though, and okay. I was I was about to be offended because of the story of who this is about and Bentner becoming into the story, but luckily, it's okay. Right. It it is a story um, about Javier Macherano in the headline. At planetfootball.com is an ode to Mascherano, so devoted he tore his starts with an A and ends in hole for Whoa! Argentina. Whoa! You guys know the story, uh, right? Yeah. I mean, he, he did. Like, yeah. like he did. Like, he did. Yeah. That that's a, that's a that's factual a, statement. That is a factual statement, and it was not a it was not a pretty visual either. Well, you didn't have to see the visual, and you didn't really know about it until he talked about it afterwards. But he, he didn't need to hear him talk about it. Um, but yes, it happened. Now, I did not expect to see Nicholas Bentner in an ode to Mascherano, and I was very offended at first. But I didn't realize this is actually a really good story. Um, he had just went to Barcelona. He hadn't been there very long. It was the 2010-11 season. A lot of people didn't think he fit at Barcelona. He was the Barcelona kind of player because he is a guy who tears his <laughs> and tackles and stuff. That's not normally what you think of Barcelona. But he became a, a real favorite of Pep Guardiola. He ended up being a center back at 5'9". He was awesome for them. But it was a tackle on 
Bentner that really put him over the top at Barcelona. It was in the Champions League. I remember the tackle after reading this. 20-10-11, last 16, second leg. Barca leading 4-3 on aggregate. Um, Arsenal got a late chance. Jack Wilshire passed through to Bentner on the run. Mascherano later told the Guardian about the tackle he made on Bentner. He said that tackle marked a before and after. Honestly, after five, six months, I thought it was unlikely I'd be here long. My characteristics seemed to go against everything Barcelona stood for. That moment marked me. If Bentner had controlled the ball and gone the other way, he'd have gotten away from me and uh, I don't even know what would have happened. But it happened the way it happened. We ended up winning the Champions League. Things worked out well. Yes, he tackled Bentner. And things worked out very well for him. Hashtag hero. I love you. Javier Mascherano. Thank you for tackling <laughs> Bentner. And I guess thank you for tearing your... Oh, in a game, man. a World Cup semifinal against the Netherlands. Whew. Man, Gonzalo Higuain, couldn't we score a goal in the final against Germany to win that? Because the man tore his... Mm-hmm. To get you there. How can you even look Javier Mascherano in the eye after not scoring that World Cup final? Like, how? Mm. I want to see Mascherano the manager. He's, I think he's with one of the Argentine youth national teams. I think he might be a great manager. Great leader. One of the, the, the best that we've seen of our generation in terms of holding midfielders slash center backs slash just guys you don't want to get into a barroom brawl with. That's Javier Mascherano. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, Mascherano won out of the over one bit. No, that is true, Kenzie. All right, that'll do it for us uh, tomorrow before Nick sends us home. It won't be a normal live show because we have a field trip tomorrow morning. Um, I'll hop on probably about 8.15 is what I'm shooting for, uh, 8.30 the latest, just for a morning update of the latest rumors, innuendo, news, what have you, from MLS and beyond. And then John and Jarrett and I will have a recap of how we saw things with Atlanta United first preseason friendly against Georgia Storm of the NPSL. It's behind closed doors at the training ground. Probably a lot of different people are going to play in this. I don't know who's going to play on the right side because you don't have uh, Ronald Hernandez or Brooks Linden right now, so that'll be interesting. Um, Probably a lot of rotation. I'll be looking for how the team looks with Gonzalo Pineda's game model and concepts a lot more than anything else. That's I'm looking for big picture stuff in this one. We'll see. Hopefully nobody gets hurt. That's always the biggest thing. And it's a great opportunity for Georgia Storm as well, for a local grassroots team to be able to get a chance to go to the training ground and play a game like this. It's huge for those guys and huge for what that club is doing. So very, very cool. I'm, I'm glad Atlanta United has given them that opportunity. But uh, we will have an update on what we saw in that game, 2 o'clock or so. Should end about 1. We'll hear from Gonzalo Pineda and players. So be on the lookout about 2 o'clock or so. We'll go live on the app. So it'll be audio only because we will be remote. But uh, you can be on the lookout for that tomorrow afternoon. Send us home, Nick. Uh, reach out to somebody and say something nice to them on social media. Don't just clown them. Just reach out to somebody and say something nice. Random person on your, your list. Just reach out to them and, and, and tell them you're proud of them about something they've done. Make them feel good. There's too much bad crap in the world. Okay. Mm-hmm. So flip it up. Okay? Do, do that for me. All right? Until next time, we love you guys so much. Thank you for listening no matter where you are in the world. Even if you're Tibet, Mongolia, uh, even if you're in Ecuador, it, we nothing but love. We appreciate everybody who tunes in, and especially if you are right here in the great city of Atlanta, the city that should have had somebody besides Maroon 5 when the Super Bowl was here. Man. Pepsi, I'm not forgiving you for that ever in life. Mm. Life. Uh, so until then, everybody, mucho, mucho euro, yo.